Welcome to the Planescape, where good and evil clash, where law and order maintain their delicate balance, the battleground for gods and monsters. Many heroes have written their legends in the stars of the Astral Sea, but these are not their stories. The Per Aspera and her crew, Kiana, Finbar, Virla, and Danny, may not be the stuff of legends yet, but they're definitely rolling with difficulty. Hello, and welcome to a little Planes Hopping D&D campaign, folks. My name is Austin, your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, and as always, I am joined by my enterprising explorers expanding their understandings of existence. Say hello, everyone. Hey, hi, hi. I like that I can and, see you looking at the cue card now. <laughs> do. do you think I ever memorized them <laughs> or awesome, made them up on the spot? Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. It's off the dome every single time, guys. You know that. Mm-hmm. Off the dome. Every single time. I wish I had that power. Anyway, welcome back. Uh, season three, episode four. Uh, very exciting things as the stakes continue to raise this season. But before we get going and rejoin our heroes where last we left them, uh, I'm going to toss it over to the loudly typing Sophia. If she could please uh, go ahead. And... <laughs> Thank you for what, calling you that out in episode wrenches? because now what I have to sound? leave my typing sounds in the audio. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to cut it, so I had to say If she wants to write her 1800s novel in a typewriter, let her. <laughs> Some of it us have like to do administrative of, duties. Like, stale like... crumbs underneath those keys. Like, what is that sound? Austin has just sent the ball hurtling over the net over onto my side. I'm winding up with the racket to smack it back over. But before I do, we've got some fun oh, uh, housekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a different volleyball. sport every time now. I feel like that's a good bit. Austin gets to do his bit. I get to do my bit. That's how this works. Uh, well. <laughs> what is this show if not a loose collection of bits that we're each doing? What is any D&D game, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. We do operate under funniest joke policy. So. Yeah. The yeah. funniest joke that's wins, true. correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, the funniest joke is canon. That's what yes. it is. Yes, yes. Uh, but okay, focus. speaking of being canon, this show is, in fact, uh, sponsored. And this adventure is brought to you by none other than World Anvil. Today's Whoa. very fun adventure brought to you by World Anvil. World Anvil is a browser-based world-building tool designed to help you, the creator, write and world-build, all while keeping your work organized and in one place. World maps, calendars, customizable wikis, visual timelines, and more let you decide how best to build your world. And when you're ready to write, look no further than the built-in word processor. You can write your prose directly in World Anvil to keep every step of the process in one place. We all know TTRPGs are all about the power of friendship, and with real-time collaboration, you can work with your players or other creators on the same project at the same time. On top of all that jazz, World Anvil recently rolled out a new feature called Whiteboards. Their visual canvas allows creators to freely draw out their ideas, adding diagrams, flowcharts, mood boards, and more. If you're a more visual creator, this feature is perfect for you. You can chart out character arcs, storyboard key scenes, uh, look through the various pages of a journal that you totally legally obtain from a spooky robot's uh, master's den of creation or whatever it's called. Workshop. Yeah, you got it. And, uh, (laughs) you know, (laughs) whatever else you need to help make the story you see in your mind come to life. We got there interested of course you are and it only gets better because for our listeners world anvil is offering a special discount just use code plug at checkout for 40 percent off a yearly membership that's code plug p-l-u-g at checkout for 40 percent off a yearly membership and thank you again to world anvil for sponsoring today's adventure Whew. what a, what about that was canon I was gonna say it, but I decided not to mm-hmm. because I. You know what's yeah. canon, Noir? That World Anvil is offering our listeners an excellent discount if they use code Plug for forty percent off at checkout. That's that's real. That you can actually follow the link in the show notes to get that deal mm-hmm. for yourself. And that's which plane that's on is being the World canon. Anvil in? Uh, the material, obviously. <laughs> I was, it feels like a mechanism. Uh, the World Anvil? The World Anvil would be located in Mount Celestia because it oh, there's, belongs there's an actual to uh, answer. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hammer Maradin. Oh, fun. Uh, that's yeah. not, I don't think it's, I think it's called the All Forge. And but that's where we're going today. It's basically the Anvil of the World. <laughs> God of Dwarves. Um, yes. But seriously, thank you, World Anvil, for sponsoring today's adventure. Uh, they helped make this podcast possible. And with that, uh, the ball has crossed the net. Uh, bounced once and it's just whoosh, hitting it back over there. Austin, this is a returning serve. Uh, what you what you got? Bring us into the adventure. Yeah. <laughs> you... uh, 
Certainly. Uh, I do want to note uh, no cheeky little comment from Red about Sophia obviously reading off of a cue card there, but we're going to let that slide. <laughs> Are you t- no, come on. That hey. was all off the dome. Hey. I've been reading from scripts for a long time, and I can tell what is and isn't. I am a consummate oh, professional. You are. <laughs> can you tell her a little oh, bit out of practice? Oh, it's been two weeks, but it's been a very long two weeks. We have to shake that dust off somehow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I asked before, it's like, how long has it been since we recorded? They're like two weeks. She's like, I swear uh, to God, it was months. You know the thing in The Matrix when Keanu's fighting Agent Smith and he like does the karate pose and all the dust shakes off him? I yep. feel like that's what we got to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, very much of you. <laughs> <laughs> if that's all the right, case. let's get to the trauma. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, something, We're something up up. multiverse? <laughs> Welcome to the Virla season, I guess. <laughs> when last we left our heroes, you traveled back to the twin paradises of Bytopia, following a job from your new patron, so to speak, your handler, perhaps, uh, Delphine, I believe is her name. Babysitter. You were your babysitter, essentially. You were tasked with picking up uh, an item that she needed for a client uh, moments, to... <laughs> you were tasked with picking up an item she needed for a client from a band named Casimir, who she had some working with in the past. You were sent ahead, discovered that uh, Casimir was nowhere to be found in his workshop upon this uh, layer of Bytopia, but uh, instead recruited by Emmy, the arcane intelligence that runs his household slash workshop laboratory, whatever you want to call it. There was some investigation done, some shady goings on, including uh, learning of Casimir's true whereabouts that he was currently locked in the pantry. There was a discussion with Emmy about her wanting to go out and see the world, a fight with this uh, Warforged-esque armor, this uh, personal shield guardian that she'd built for herself. Uh, and then deals were made, Virla understanding that there was more to be gained here uh, on the request, uh, at the, uh, under the direction of Delphine, decided to have Casimir look at Docent and offered a trade. Uh, unlocking Docent's information and giving Docent to Casimir in exchange for Emmy replacing the arcade intelligence with inside of the now uh, housing of Docent, we'll call it. And uh, in exchange, she gets to go out and experience the world through Virla's eyes. We left with uh, Danny having stolen a journal from Casimir's <laughs> personal uh, supply of uh, personal notes. Finbar cooking some soup, Kiana doing whatever Kiana is up to, and Virla, you stand in the workshop of Casimir, the sort of major image uh, projection of the uh, simulated intelligence of Docent, who has just explained to you that, indeed, he is Docent, forged by House Kenneth serving as a repository for information gathered by assigned Warforged while exploring worlds outside of the sphere of influence of Eberron. It is here that we pick up this new information coming to you. The, uh, I imagine the, <laughs> the uh, conspiracy board inside of Virla's head beginning to perhaps connect some dots. Oh yeah. Virla. Because I remember, uh, it, you know, yes. Maxim saying that before Virla's accident, that was sort of his uh, like uh, focus, his focus of study, um, and kind of seeing it, seeing like tangible evidence about that for the first time. That's enough to kind of have Virla freak out or whatever. <laughs> Virla, is there anything you would like to ask Docent? His memories uh, or its memories all unlocked before you. You Docent, like you said that you had, or I turned to Casimir. You called it a mimir, a mimir, a mimir. Yeah, it's like um, they're like a personal information repository. Like uh, they can recall information for you really easily. Um, Wizard spends like a ton of time and money making them, filling, like, getting information, feeding them in, uh, and then. You can sell it off to the highest bidder, uh, and any time they need information about the planes, uh, or you know whatever whatever uh, topic the, the the maker of Mimir thought interesting enough, uh, the Mimir can parrot it to you if you just ask. 
Uh, I will say this is one of the more charming ones. Usually they look like um, skulls with a little like animated jaw. So, oh well. Glad that the maker has taste. Speaking of, uh, Docent, you mentioned that you were assigned to a warforge. Can you list the your maker, your owner, the warforge you have assigned, you have been assigned to? Certainly. I was assigned as the personal docent to Vigil to record their findings and assist in translations and calculations. Um, give me a profile on Vigil. Vigil was assigned member of the crew. Excuse me. <laughs> I knock over my water bottle. Oh, everyone Vigil comes for Sophia's clicky crew. keyboard that also knocks <laughs> over a water bottle and it's nothing. <laughs> hey, at least I'm not unwrapping not truffles over here. <laughs> worse. What is happening, you guys? <laughs> <laughs> we had an eventful stream over the weekend. Rolling difficulty ASMR. <laughs> okay. That's what people like in their ASMR, right? Just the sound of heavy oh, water bottles being knocked Several down. of the worst sounds possible to hear through a microphone played one after the other. <laughs> Let me just rattle my dice together over here. Just... Nice and soothing. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, there was <laughs> plot happening. Sorry, who the fuck's been doing like, like 10 minutes? We've gone on like five different tangents. Okay, all right, all right, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, so I'm prepared. <laughs> Vigil was assigned to the mission of our ship. The purpose to investigate the sequences and patterns of co-termination of the myriad planes of existence with the prime material plane. A crew of specially selected warforged to Vigil included were chosen by the House Kenneth for this first voyage of its kind. To journey to the stars in the pursuit of great knowledge. List crew. List ship. Crew assigned. Vigil. Temple. Onyx. Five. Crystal. Assigned ship. Ad Astra. <laughs> oh! Now, Latin doesn't exist in this world, I don't think, but... I imagine Latin being, uh... Um, uh so, so in, when I when I do language, I think it's saying uh, Tolkien rules, Yeah, right? I was gonna say... Where we're, can... we're reading sure, um, sure. A, uh, a translation. So think of Latin not being directly trans... Latin, the language does not exist, but things being translated into Latin are typically draconic. Okay, so all this to ask, I am familiar with the phrase ad astra paraspera, yes? Uh, yes. Okay. Bro, I think you're the mirror version, like the Star Trek mirror universe version. No. Uh, <laughs> how long has, um, how long was the mission running for? Mission duration before termination, 18 months. 12 days. Define termination. End of assignment as directed by Vigil. Were you, de were you decommissioned? What happened to Vigil? You say it in a way that's very, is that, do you want, how, how much information are you looking here? You look for short version or long version because you kind of phrased it in a short version way. So Austin's just asking. Oh, sure. Um, I guess, yeah, that was a pretty simple question that might lead to a long answer. I guess the thing that I'm really asking for is what happened to Vigil. because. Apparently, I had found Docent by some means. Um, so something happened, had to have happened to separate Docent from Vigil. Certainly. After being assigned as personal Docent to Vigil, it became clear in the physics of the celestial manifolds that more data would be required in order to properly predict their motions and fulfill our expedition's purpose. A plan was decided among the crew in order to gain more perspective. I was asked to assist in calculations for a course around Danvi in order to maximize our velocity. Other preparations were taken by various other members of the crew. We were then departed the known multiverse for an unknown destination. Under orders from the captain, we decided to investigate another apparent multiverse, a world containing many worlds. Entering this version of the astral plane between manifolds. It had an influx of new data to record, but shortly after I was given the new directive, as already stated. Our attempts to plot another course to escape this multiverse proved ultimately ineffective for an unknown reason. But more importantly, the crew became interested in the culture of the designated mechanites of this multiverse. The order to abandon the mission was given and I was given the directive to lock all currently gathered data 
before the ship was crashed and abandoned where it was hoped it would not be discovered again, stolen in within the plain of Acheron. Do you know the location? Location unknown. Termination yeah. given before crash. Yes, that makes sense. I remained in a period of stasis until discovered and reactivated an unknown time later. My primary functions were reactivated, but the data collected remained inaccessible as per last given directives. This is when user, Virla, began his experimentation into the recording of data using my systems as blueprint, before a period of inactivity that eventually ended with my return to him. You were still taking data when Verla uh, recommissioned you? Upon recommissioning, I began anew the gathering of data. During my decommissioned time, no data was gathered. To find the crew that Verla worked with. Little information was given. Their names have been recorded. Captain. Designation, Emerson. Navigator. Designation, Esther. Hunter. Designation, Eden. Mechanic. Designation, Caleb. Bodyguard. Designation, Sierra. Negotiator. Designation, Dexter. Do you know what their purpose was? I have to think for a version of your character <laughs> that has never existed. Would Virla have explained to Docent? Uh, I think Virla would have. Oh yeah, thank you, pass me. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Virla's penchant for recording any on all information in his own personal monologue <laughs> and a dear docent style diary entry comes full circle. <laughs> You look under the floorboard and it's the third original conspiracy <laughs> board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what that was. <laughs> so familiar. Given prerogative of ship designated, Paraspora. Seek out new worlds and potential of other multiverses. That seems awfully familiar and similar to your original your original purpose. Indeed. This has not yet been considered. Had Virla mentioned... No, he wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. What am I talking about? Um... <laughs> Casimir's just, like, looking from you to the major image back to you. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I have to deal with Casimir at some point. Um... Huh. <laughs> yeah, you gotta deal with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I'm trying to... <laughs> Feel like comes right down to like the door and go turn red. <laughs> can, can you calculate how long into your recommissioning on the Paraspora were you given away to the mechanite known as Maxim to study further? Time from reactivation until delivery to designation Maxim. Twenty months. How, I'm sorry. How much? Twenty months. 20, okay. Oh. I know that Mistra, this is this is Nora talking, I know that Mistra had sent Virla to reactivate Docent for a reason that is presumably linked to, you know, finding his old crew. I think there's a part of him that doesn't yet want to entertain the notion that they have successfully traveled through planes <laughs> and multiverses. <laughs> Partially because he doesn't know how to do that himself right now. Do well, we have the I rights mean, to the Eberron campaign setting? Are we allowed to go there? <laughs> uh, technically, yeah, within the d, &D canon, there's oh uh, there's a way to do that. Yes, there is. It's a I'll get legal on it. Uh, we'll uh, take a look at the postscript, see if we can't put it in <laughs> uh, Sorry, the Vera, joke is legal that says I'm we can't legal. do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, try I'm just trying to figure out the knowledge that, I'm, like, whether or not this is enough like, this is the knowledge that Mr. was supposed to get, like, Mr. was trying to get to me, or if there's something else that I need to be asking. Um, I... As Virla mulls that over. Yeah. Let's get to Danny. Ha! 
Hello. Danny, uh, you snuck out with a notebook and uh, uh, you're on the, if I remember the last you left, you had, had, you, you had left the, uh, the workshop in entirety and we're back on the ship, correct? Yeah, I would have been heading back to the ship at this point. Uh, fantastic. Uh, what would Danny like to do? Uh, Danny took the notebook because in her mind, you know, she has no idea that Virla has already made significant steps towards the reclamation of his lost memories and she wants to help her buddy out. So she stole this notebook oh. in the uh, hope to thumb through it over her downtime and see if she can't gleam anything about repairing broken data spheres and other similar Fair technology. Fair enough. I would, I would say, I don't know if he's made, <laughs> he's learning stuff that's different than reclaiming memories. So yeah, don't say I'm short. Uh, all right. Where does Danny go to read a notebook in secret? Uh, the engine room, probably in the pile of half-opened boxes of screws and whatnot. Maybe she throws a bolt at the motive force generator. Who knows? That's where she does all work. Uh, <laughs> all right. You sit down, crack open the book. Go ahead and make me... I would call this an investigation check. Heck yeah. <laughs> As you read. Oh, so good at that. Okay, it's not too bad. Uh, 22. Damn, very good. Crack open and are flipping through. This is a notebook that, under the direction of, uh, I think already directed by Emmy, you, you gained the right notebook into what you were curious about, which is, is this artificer of, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, this artificer of awakening. Uh, is what work if any, has he done into the possibility of resurrecting lost memories, which is a weird space, right? Because you're talking about the intersection of, in order to be broadly applicable, you're talking about the intersection of, you know, human mind and arcane, literally arcane technology. You know, where can these things blend? Uh, but you begin flipping through and you see there are a lot of notes in here that begin just, it's you know it's sort of like reading a narrative in a way at least you with a 22 investigation your mind can pick up on it on the idea of like starting with backed up he calls it re uh, recollection but mm -hmm. backed up recollection from emmy and uh, other to other arcane intelligence in the past the you know emmy is his you know his great work so these other ones in the past the idea of backing up the information they'd already learned um and then he goes on to uh talk about uh, theory on covering it he talks about theory of like um, block, uh, uh, putting it behind a safeguard so that is uh, not readable by other people, uh, which is kind of exactly what happened to Dos what was up with Docent's backlog. Uh, how to create that and theor theories on how to unlock that. There's a lot of with. Uh, you want to give me an insight check too? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm great at those too. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Can I inside check that claim? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Seven? Nice. Um, <laughs> all is well and good here. Uh, you... All is balanced as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> this is the work of a stable man. No. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> One page just says all work and no play. <laughs> That uh, was like no. week six stuck in the pantry. We can't judge yeah, exactly. for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, she was making them food and water. Anyway, uh, you're going through, and uh, yeah, there's you're finding this narrative to how he's going on, and it's it's almost like he's competing with himself in a what's the word an arms race of ideas. <laughs> I get that. Uh, and then I he goes that. to the idea of being, can you fully erase memory, and then if you did it, if I'm can I'm can a memory be fully, a, a re recollection, as he calls them, be fully erased? And if it can be fully erased, can it be recovered? Uh, and there's, a, yeah, there's a start to be like, yeah, this like weird arms race kind of thing where he's like, this is the thing I could do is erase it. Okay, what if someone did it to me? What would I do? He's sort of creating his own problems to solve he's through here. He's playing chess against himself. Uh, so he hasn't eternal sunshined himself and rediscovered this spell <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> no, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh... You're flipping through, uh, and you begin to get to pages that are translated, basically arcane code, which is with that investigation. Uh, actually, I would say investigation check is sorting things out. Go ahead and roll me just a straight intelligence check. Just go ahead and add plus four. Okay. Or whatever your intelligence All right, is. I'm good at these. <laughs> Dirty twenty. 
Ooh. Dirty 20. So, uh, on a dirty 20, there's definitely a sense of understanding in the way that someone who has been practicing art for a long time can appreciate skill needed by to make works like the masters. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, this is you, an incredibly smart person, and in fact, an artificer who's created their own arcane intelligence plug, right? Yes. Uh, a very simplistic one. It's, mm -hmm. you know, but you have uh, looking at something that is, it's the kind of genius where, whereas Finbar would look at this and be like, this is a genius. I don't understand how any of this works. You're a genius. You're like, oh, okay, okay. If, if I worked much, if I, if I applied myself completely differently, I could get how I would come here. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I could do, I think I could understand this if I spent a lot of time looking things up and studying it. But like right now, I could never have made this. This is the work of, uh, the same way he probably couldn't make it in a, a canon like you can. This is the work of a master at work. All right. Uh, you're flipping through and you begin to see like double check, triple checking his work. Uh, and then it comes to, you see it start to see, it fumbles off into a lot of question marks. Uh, and you see the word like delivery written with a question mark. And there begin to be like blueprints on what you assume is supposed to be like the device to like deliver this or you know administer that however you want to describe this arcane program he's written mm -hmm. the the device to use it uh, and he he like has not got it down uh and he's flipping and flipping and indeed you come to a page most of the way through the book maybe there's like 15 percent of the book left and there's just uh when it turns to blank page you find that there's just like a um a piece of cardstock folded in half tucked in as a bookmark that just leads off to he's got nothing he's, he's got nothing more on this subject okay interesting I imagine reading through this and all is taking most of Danny's time right now so for now I'm just sort of yes we're imagining that this is taking time just like uh, decoding docent and talking to him is so good Do you want to leave it at that, or is there anything Danny would like to do as she's reading? Uh, she just sort of. And she gets to the end here. Yeah, I think she's just sort of processing it all right now and starting to make any sort of plans of her own to either adapt it or figure out if there's a way that she can use it. But uh, I, Sophia the player, do not know what those plans are yet. So I think her reading the book is a good enough start. <laughs> all right, you close it. Uh, is, is she just gonna hold on to this for now, or is she like yeah, intending to put it back? Yeah, I'm not giving it back. Okay. <laughs> So that's just going to get cool. shoved. I imagine there's like a little part of the engine room that Danny just like shoves stuff into, like like almost like a locker, but it's just a pile underneath some workbenches. And she just shoves it in there somewhere. <laughs> so, so what I'm under understanding is that we all have little hidey holes in the ship, huh? I built those hidey holes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mine are called pockets. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of... Yeah, you find a spot, just a lot of, like, sweatshirts you've worn once, so they're not really dirty, but you don't want to put them back in the drawer because they're not really clean. Yeah. yeah. Does the Prosper I got a have a washing laundry machine? basket for mine. Uh, no. It's a transition laundry basket. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, you read through, stick this in, and begin to ponder what this means. Finbar and Kiana, is there anything you guys would like to be doing in the meantime? This is... Let's assume that this conversation and between Danny's thing, that there's about an hour of time here you guys could fill with uh, if you have things of interest. I want to mark off a short rest for one thing. I spent a lot of key points. Fair enough. Kiana spends this time short resting. Gotcha. I wish I knew that Danny was trying to do weird memory shit because... <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Road not taken. Don't worry about it. Um, she just got it, you know? I know. Um... Yeah, I. Uh, so, where's Emmy right now? Is she in Vera's uh, head? She's in the. Yeah, she's in Vera's Okay. Head. All right, so she's not in the not in the robot anymore. Um. Yeah, I kind of don't have much going on uh right now, and I don't really want to interrupt anybody. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I think I'll just hang out with the ship pets until some inciting incident occurs, <laughs> perhaps. No. <laughs> You want to play right. Lucky Bolt? <laughs> um, no, I'm good, but thanks. <laughs> someday. Someday. Right. Finbar. Is there anything you uh, 
Yeah, uh, so I will finish cleaning up the kitchen. I imagine there's still extra soup left over, so I'm gonna sort of pack those away in like, fun little proportions for the eccentric um, uh, inventor to have some real food to eat for the next couple days. Um, and then I will pour out... Uh, I, I imagine it's pretty late into the night, I guess. Uh, this is afternoon. You guys aren't that oh. late now, but... Okay. Like, you know, it's, it, I'd say like 4.35-ish. Oh, okay. Not <laughs> late at all, yeah. Um, then, yeah, then I'll pour, um, I guess, an extra bowl um, for me and Virla, if he ever decides to come down from there. Um, and I will head over to... You know what? No, fuck it. I'll go, I'll go check up on them. Um, I'll walk up to the uh, workshop, knock on the door, and uh, ask, hey, how's, how's it going in there? You, uh, Docent finishes describing, and you, Virla, begin to ponder what's, like, what is the connection here? What is Mr. trying to, what is Mr. trying to lead me down? Like, what is the, what is the next step she wants me to take? Yeah. Here, Casimir's like, so, this is all very heavy and new for you? Yes. Um, I, I... My memory fails me even now. I told you about the incident before. Lost a lot of data spheres. Lost a lot. Lost a lot of memory. I sure. didn't even consider that Docent was taking information of me from before that incident. Um, not enough to. Yeah, you know, I didn't have it by the time that incident actually occurred. So I don't. I still don't know the events surrounding it. Um, but this and all of this and I just kind of gesture vaguely at like the the AI floating magic in the air is a little overwhelming well it's overwhelming for me too so don't spite it oh Uh, well uh, at this point you hear the knock from Finbar uh, who Finbar go ahead how y'all two geniuses doing in there Oh, goodness, Finbar. <laughs> okay. All There's right, a I lot. See, all right, I see how it is. And I sort of, like, walk into the room, and I see all the magic floating around everywhere. And I go, oh, oh, boy. All right. Um, well, I guess I won't need this, and I'll hand my bowl over to Casimir um, and give Virla a his. So, what exactly am I looking at here? This is Docent. M- Mimir? Docent is a Mimir. Yeah, Docent's a Mimir. Yeah, you're getting it. Um, we knew this. Docent records information. Um, there was a, there was a, some amount of information that was previously locked, even before I had first picked it up. You know, years ago, I think at this point. Um, Casimir, ever so kindly, uh, decoded it, and we have access to it, and there is so much of it. Um, do you remember when we were at Maxim's sanctuary and he had said that my focus before meeting you and Danny and Kiana was on the existence of another planescape or other planescapes? This docent is from another planescape. So it it seems as though my research has... it it holds water. Uh, to some degree, um, there is a very alarming and strikingly similar crew from the planescape that Dose entails from. Our ship is called Paraspora. Docent's original ship was called Ad Astra. I don't know what this means. None of us I don't do. know. But there is some sort of connection Go to here. Ease. I'm telling you. And wait, so wait, wait, let me get this straight. So you're telling me technically you kind of already knew all of this, though. I, I mean, I think I had inklings. And at the very okay. least, Maxim had said that I was researching into it, but I didn't know any of this. All of this was locked until just now. Huh. Interesting. So, huh. 
I'll be honest with you. I didn't understand 90% of what you just said just now. Uh, but... Do you want me to draw a diagram? Is, is it that part in the movie? <laughs> yes, he's already drawing a diagram. He's got the right. piece of paper, he's folding it in half, he's got the pencil ready to go. Right, right, right. Well, I don't know how they travel. like a ring between. But, um, yeah. I, I, I guess the thing that does make sense to me is like, these, these look like... I guess kind of like the stars out on the astral sea. So if there's portals going to different planes, I guess there's different planes that go to different realities, you said? Well, obviously we know that there is something beyond just the Great Wheel cosmology as we know it. Um, you know, aberrations, some of them had to have come from somewhere. The Far Realm being a, a good theory but I, I think largely the Far Realm has been described as just this amalgam, this 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 slurry of of, of whatever it is. It, it never occurred that just beyond it or somewhere out there, there was just another one of us, another planescape. I don't know, but that might not be true. Docent describes traveling between planescapes and from from the old crews, from the Ad Astra's attempts, and it seemed like a very difficult thing to achieve, but they did it, and from what I understand, uh, they tried to go back but couldn't for a reason that they had not been able to figure out. Eventually they had decided to abandon their quest to return home and instead make a home here. They were interested in Mechanites and I believe at least in appearance we look very similar. Almost as if tiny perturbations in the planescape would cause differences in other planescapes. I don't know. I'm just speaking out of my ass at this point. But... Well, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't... I wouldn't think too hard about it. I'm more oh, concerned... Oh, Finpart, I thought you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more concerned with why it was locked away, this information. Secret secrets. I don't know. I know that they... secrets can sometimes be necessary. You know, everyone deserves their own personal space uh, to do right. the things that they need to do. Um, but I do know that. Hold on to secrets long enough, they can become dangerous. Uh, yes. Um, now, I don't for... know, well, I, I, yeah, I don't know why they locked this information away. Furthermore, they seem to have gone to the extreme of crashing the Ad Astra somewhere in Acheron. We don't have any locations. Actually, yeah, uh, you did get side th you did get the location of Tholdenin, which is the second layer. So oh, sure. Somewhere in okay. the planet-sized in second the layer. Junk heap, it's folded basically. into the second layer. Ooh. Got it. Okay. Right. Um, side chatter brings up a good point. There are visuals that are going on with this, right? <laughs> no, so no, it's just oh, okay. no, it's just Dosen's like uh, Never mind. picture the the scene in Age of Ultron where they put Jarvis up. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just sure. that like yeah. that thing kind of like moving and bopping about as gotcha. like, uh, as okay. Dosen Never mind. thinks and speaks. Okay. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I had not even considered this. This is unlike anything I have at least witnessed in my new stream of consciousness, but I, the curious part of me obviously wants to go seek out that ship. I don't really have a good reason for it though. Viola, let me tell you something. When I left home, I, I didn't really leave. There was a. What happened was there was a. There was a freak storm. Uh, it must have been magic or something. It blew through the Feywild. Next thing I knew, I woke up in the middle of the Astral Sea. Oh. I had never been there before in my life. I had no idea what I was looking at. Just like I had no idea what I'm looking at right now. But that curiosity you're feeling. The, the little bit of fear, a uh, little bit of excitement, 
something I hadn't felt in a very long time. And that's when I realized that maybe adventuring is what I'm meant to do. Um, and I'm glad that I've done it. Uh, I got to do it with my old crew on the Whip Crown, and I get to do it all over again with y'all. Um, and losing friends, as we both know, comes with the adventuring lifestyle. Making friends also comes with it. Um, and we have to make sure that whether we break or make new friends, that we use that power to do what's best for each other. And I guess in this case, in realities. Um, so, I say, I, I think it'd be really cool to go check out that shit. What's it called? The Ad, Ad Astra? Ad Astra. To okay. the stars. To the stars. Mm, interesting. Alright. Um, and, uh, we're in a position to do a lot of good. You know, you're very smart. Kiana's very strong. And Danny's Danny. So, <laughs> nothing like that. So, whatever this alternate reality versions of us, or whatever we're going I to be I didn't go facing, that far. <laughs> when, uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to bring that up, but... Uh, mm. Sorry, that's my fault. I'm to... making a lot of fear with goatee jokes and side chatter. <laughs> let's not. It's well, just the Spider-Man pointing because... meme the whole season down. <laughs> Finbar, Finbar, go ahead and roll me an insight check. Real, uh, insight. Into the fear -liverse. Part of the reason why Virla doesn't want to entertain this fact is because he lost one crew and he could gain two crews? Uh, <laughs> that is a 21. Oh, Okay. You're talking a lot about connections, and the idea that like they're like your doppelgangers is like, you know, far fetched. Because first, this is not full broke for broke there first of all, but you know yeah, that, was, that was more that, Wally than uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> the idea of the idea of you, you talk about like the similarity between you being blown from the Feywild here in that wild magic storm that took you, and there's a couple things here, and I think for most people, it might be beyond their. Um, their grasp, or maybe beyond their personal philosophy, but tell me if this makes sense for Finbar as a stars druid, someone who, you know, observes the patterns, not just in celestial bodies, but in a world where literally celestial bodies can affect reality um, in fantastical ways, the idea that motions run parallel, even where there may not seem to be any connection at all, is something that lies true of the stars, and as far as you know, true of many things beneath them. So, Perhaps that's something that comes to mind through all this conversation. Motions run parallel. Yeah, yeah. No, Finbar's gonna take a, a look at, uh, again, Docent splayed out, and then Virla. Now, when this is all over, all this, whatever this may be, and you've gotten the help you need, I'm going to need just a tiny little favor. Sure. Th this seems like a very long favor to, to fulfill on. Surely we can fulfill it sooner than the completion of this? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's contingent on one thing. Uh, whenever you're done with that ring, I I'm gonna need it. <laughs> May I ask why? <laughs> you had the opportunity to keep it before. You have your secrets. I got mine. When we are done with this task, I will give you the ring. Yeah. Now, eat up. Sounds like we got a trip to make. Well, this is also <laughs> contingent on whether or not Delphine allows us to go to Acheron. That is kind of... A big ask. Oh, right. <sighs> Babysitter. Uh. Yes. I don't... We pissed off Otto enough, I think. And I would kind of like to let the sleeping bear go back to sleep before we poke it again. So, maybe for now. Virla making... Virla doing an insight check. 
Okay, sure. Eight. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> We're creeping up yeah. there. I mean, Delphine was kind of given, like you, you know. Oh yeah, the, yeah. They, I mean, to them, that that would be you know reasonable, but like, a, a thing they would have to worry about. But yeah, you know that you might be able to. Prime no, yeah, yeah. That, that's why I'm saying it. Just because, like, gotcha, gotcha. In that case, uh, I'd like your roll of deception check. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> can I be? Can, can I have not meant to do that? Earnest. <laughs> oh shit! I have a minus two. <laughs> Five. <laughs> oh. How Finn does Bar the Roman man have the worst poker face? <laughs> it's just that the eyes keep switching color. The more Virla tries to lie, the more you hear like the whirring sound of the fan working over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? That's, That's a good tell. Yeah. That's a good tell. Yeah. Finn Bar just insight. like a jet of steam shoots out the side of his head. Virla's overheating. <laughs> Uh, that's a 26. <laughs> uh, what, uh, I'll allow Noir to, to narrate this. Something slips on that comment about Delphine. Uh, what do you think Finbar would, would intuit from, from what Virla said there? What, what? The, the delivery seems just a little, the delivery seems a little too forced and kind of judging by his body motions. Um, he very quickly like shift, like looks away, um, but you can tell that he has that look in his eyes when he's discovered something, and you know often when that happens, he's not necessarily going to lose it so easily. Um, you get the sense that the thing that he is saying might not be too much of a problem at all, but you don't necessarily know why. You just know that he's. His, that's, his micro that's all he, his micro motion like his his like <laughs> well it's not micro motions I don't know what the name is but like his unconscious like body behavior is contradictory to you know what he's saying and the way that he's trying to deliver it is what I'll say um, um uh, so yeah something tells me something in the stars tells me that. There's a we found. There's a way around all that. I mean, there's what? a way around everything, right? <laughs> oh, good food. Why did I stay <laughs> on the start boat? Eating again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Why? Well, where's where? Where did we leave Delphine? She's, uh, she's on the ship. The... Yeoman. Yeah. Oh, in the town. okay. We gotta get her stuff back when we. Whenever we jet. Yeah, you just have a. I think it's just a bag. Yes, just a bag. Sure you got it in. Bag just a of little precious sack. Moments. Full of precious yeah, moments. Yeah, we something. haven't opened it for some reason. We know there's what's uh, in yeah. there. We don't need to confirm it. There's... We know exactly what that bag contains, <laughs> yeah. and it's a bunch of precious moments figures. <laughs> but until we open it, it's Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> it's Schrodinger's <laughs> cat figure. In. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. yeah. Uh, for all we know, we're still helping Delphine. Uh, we. Wherever the job takes us, the job takes us. This is not going to be a quick jaunt. But for for one, assuming let let we let's assume that we do find it, we now have an entire other ship that we would either need to haul back with us through multiple pools somewhere, preferably Sigil, possibly more likely Brass, um, or time would need to be taken to explore it in depth and to make sure that we have gotten everything that there is to be gleaned. I could shrink it. <laughs> uh, your shrink only lasts an hour, but if you got the spell slots. If we, we shrink, shrink it, it and we put it in the bag of holding and then it grows bigger because time passes, <laughs> does it still... Um... Oh, please. Please let question. us do that. That's a great question. Man. Shrink, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's just, it just depends on the volume of the bag of holding. I'd have to see how much yeah. stuff the bag of holding can hold because it has yeah. like a poundage it, or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Like, like, doesn't a need to it's know a, about this one. The bag of holding, the demiplane <laughs> yeah. within it is a boundless space. It just only stretches so big. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So you have to shrink it again to get it out. Yeah, why am I saying this? Like I can't just look it up. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's five hundred pounds. Computer it's 500 right pounds. now. Yeah. Hold on. You just can't put anything. Oh, it's hundred. Okay, yeah. So yeah. it's all. <laughs> maybe it's all. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Another question. <laughs> <Just a little laughs> another question, Austin. Our plane yeah. ship only goes to the astral sea, right? Correct. Shit. We can't like shift to brass immediately or something like that. 
We you would have to get tuning. you could you'd have to get a tuning fork for it. Well, we so got you, a gift you could, from you could you just need a tuning fork. Enoch, right? To but that's to his that's to his place. It's to Limbo. Huh? Uh huh? I think right. Am I totally misremembering? Uh, no, he gave us like he... another thing. It's not a tuning fork. Uh, it's like oh. a bone that's like inscribed with. No, that might have been something else. No, no the, the, bone the bone is the, the... Uh, contact other plane. Contact other plane. Hold planes. on, let me check my inventory uh, slash possibly my notes. Check. Um, but you guys are generally responsible for keeping track of your treasure, and if it's lost, they consider it lost. Hey, so, hey. Okay. Oh no! Well, <laughs> Plug's got it. It's in the walls. <laughs> Plug's right, got audience. it. It's in the walls. Audience, we rely on you. Let us know. Yeah, let um, us know when this episode us. recorded in, months in, in advance. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. in nine <laughs> weeks right, when this shit. comes out, we finished recording the season. Okay, well, we can't shrink it. I guess is the end point. I suppose we can be nice and just ask Delphine. I don't know. Look, I may not be intuitive, but I'm intuitive to know that I'm not necessarily the best at lying. So let's just leave it at, I think if we ask Delphine, not even all that nicely, she would let us go. So it's possible. We can get there. Now, what are we going to do with the whole... Is this, is this another ship? Presumably, yes. Uh, Docent, what class ship is the Ad Astra? Rowboat. <laughs> uh... Galleon, uh, Starmoth, please. I, I don't know if you ter these terms make sense in your planescape. <laughs> uh, he would say something. He would say um, something like modified class A sky ship. Shit. <laughs> that means nothing, Helpful. I don't think. <laughs> well, it's. I, uh, I think sky ship has a certain connotation, not spell jammer. Surfboard right? glider oh, from interesting. Uh, Treasure Planet. <laughs> yes. Hey, yeah. Hold on the bowl for yeah, easy yeah, storage. Tiny little. Could book go in a closet in, in a pinch. <laughs> Wait, Dosen, is the term Spelljammer known in your planescape? Negative. <gasps> Shit, okay. <laughs> define the use of a define the use of a skyship. Journeying through air or in the case of the modified Ad Astra between planes. How many modified skyships are there? To date of last known entry, one. <gasps> Damn, these guys are smart. Fuck! <sighs> Well, we're in a little bit of a pickle, because the only way we can get there is with the Ark ship. And the only way to get, you know, in, and around anywhere else is if we uh, kind of take it for ourselves. So, but if we fix it on the floor, or at the very least, the, the important bits. To the astral sea, and then we could fix it on the floor. You said you're, you said you're in agreement with this plan, right, Finbar? I'm down a clown. Danny definitely is. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to presume for Kiana, but I think she'll come along with us. If we wanted to, we could. I will ask formally. The rest of the crew, of course. I cannot... I cannot sift through all of this information and I kind of gesture to Docent. Not tonight. Not all of it. Uh, Casimir, we made an agreement that you would send what you can when you can. Uh, yes, I am still here. Just want to remind <laughs> Just you guys. Just slowly <laughs> slurping the soup. <laughs> no, I know. Like, wow, these I... guys have something going on. <laughs> I, I apologize. That was rude, Casimir. What are your thoughts on all of this? <laughs> I know this isn't your field. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want me to jump in now? <laughs> yes, yes. You are permitted to speak. Thank you for asking. He's just microwaving another <laughs> cup of noodles. You know, this is my house, right? Uh, Emmy, well. you got any thoughts on that? <laughs> Last I checked, it can't fight back anymore. <laughs> oh, give it some time. I'll teach Dosen a thing or two. You watch. Okay, sure. Like Thank you. I'll what? collect Violence. it back when. What do you think of the odds that Dosen has learned any tricks from living with the crew of the Paraspra and just makes this guy's house a living hell through like just so just many assuming... more trap doors than there were yesterday? <laughs> 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 it simply feels cozier this way. Hey, and me, put him in what a it... closet. <laughs> Uh, pantry. Yeah, but Dosen pantry. might yeah. know what Lucky Bolt is. <laughs> Just keeps pantry, hanging uh, little chunks of rock yeah. at the nearest important-looking magic item. <laughs> I am. I do think that your thoughts are valuable here. I apologize for being lost in my own. Uh, what pray tell could I say that would influence you? It kind of <laughs> seems like you've got this whole like mission, existential bit going on. Oh, I wasn't um, asking about that. I'm never going to ask your input on that. You're a man of science. I wish to know good, your input just 
knowledge wise knowledge wise um I think you're asking a uh oh, I think you're asking an artificer uh, a question that belongs to a philosopher a very narrow minded of you sorry focus I'm smart enough to know when I'm outclassed this 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 whole like rings within rings within ring steel it's you know you want me to create artificial life sure give me two three days I can crack that out on a long weekend but uh worlds beyond worlds I don't know go bother a god <laughs> same brain cell red <laughs> Uh, I like well, to incite Vila's reaction to that. <laughs> please, yeah, please. Sure, all right. yeah. Why did uh, I stay only, on the ship? Only if Noir thinks that's okay. That was Austin making No, it that's, so that's wanna... like very much, yeah. But he's literally referencing the same thing that Maximus said about like being a god boss. Like, he's literally like, go talk yeah. to a priest about the, like, the existential crisis of worlds that beyond ours. God, yeah, yeah. So we go into Eberron? Well, or, sorry, uh, Acheron? Uh, uh. <laughs> okay, well... Take the fucking compliment, please, Casimir. You <laughs> unlock Docent. You should at least give yourself credit for that. And it has another thing that you can laud over us. Okay, well, there we go. Mission accomplished. Uh, thank you for your business and nothing else. Hello, I don't oh, think there's anything else. Thank you for rescuing I don't know if there's me, any. I guess. And for the soup. This is actually, this is actually very good. I, I, good. She's been making... I told um, you. Hardtack and just tepid water for weeks so yeah yeah uh i left enough for about a week down in the kitchen so you can have that uh and if you ever need real food just go down to the market drop my name you'll probably get a discount on whatever real food that they got going on over there oh, are you a guildsman oh. ex well. <laughs> <laughs> oh well maybe you're more interesting than i thought Hey, it's exhausting talking to you. Let's go. <laughs> Everyone remember that Virla has one of the lowest charismas in the party. <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Close the door behind you. Where the hell's my door? I'm very tempted to leave it open, but I close it. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy, are you there? As we're sort of, Finbar and I are walking down. Always. Well, I hope this situation is amenable to you. I know that you won't be able to move of your own volition, but hopefully we can learn something together. Agreed? Oh, I don't require moving. I'm giddy as it is. I'm glad to hear that. And we, we established no one else can hear Emmy, right? No one else can hear Emmy. Emmy talks to you in your head just like Dosen did. Do you have gotcha. to talk out loud for Emmy to hear you? <laughs> Good question. I think you had to talk to Dosen, right? I think we have established. More, yeah. I don't I know think if he, he has. To... I don't know if he has to, but he has been. <laughs> but, you know, but did Emmy have telepathy? Actually, I forget because if she had telepathy, she would be. You, I'd say that you could talk to her without speaking. Did I give her sending? Yes. Uh, well, she. Now that she is. Check your magic item because now yeah. that she is housed within Docent, her abilities are similar but slightly altered. Uh, the oh, capabilities true. of you know yeah. the hardware have changed from being an entire building to contained within docent. So actually, uh, you know, for, for for fun, why not? Uh, for people keeping up at home, uh, the current docent has been changed, uh, and Ooh. the Wait, magic item I... now reads as follows. Would you like to read Wait, it? Can, can I? Well, can I do something a bit diegetic? Because <laughs> sure. now I'm shifting the attention back to Emmy. Finbar. Emmy does some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> um, Press X I don't to need any healing, but can you <laughs> heal me anyway? Sure, how much healing you need? Wait, hold on. Is healing word a wizard spell? Which one is a wizard uh, spell? It is not. Shit. Okay, well, never mind. Do you have any wizard spells on you? <laughs> and if so, can you cast it on me? Wizard spells? I don't but you don't even have to cast it on me. I now just realize. As I'm reading, <laughs> burning hands. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> hmm. Give me a. Let's find out. See. If not, then I can explain. It's fine. Finbar doesn't really know how his magic works. He just knows that it works and it comes from nature. Yeah, fair enough. 
Anyway, do you remember how Emmy was kicking our asses and she could, you know, copy any spell that um, was cast within her vicinity? Yeah. And sort of just tapped the thing on my forehead. Well, look who has elements. it now. I do have absorb elements, yes. But I already have absorb elements. Oh, there you go. Um, it's a lot more limited than what Emmy had, but uh, once a day there is a chance for me to just learn a new spell. And this is very interesting. We could work. We could do something with that. Fireball. Uh, unfortunately, its languages have been reset to zero. And, uh, well, speaking out of, out of world, uh, Emmy can cast comprehend languages and tongues each once per day. Uh, when she does so, she learns any language she comes into contact with during the duration of the spell. Cool. Is it both? Language, so... Yeah, so, like, she can, uh, you know, those spells are exist for two different things. One is for reading, one is for, like, speaking. So she can do one, and then whatever spells she's, if you cast Comprehend Languages, any spell you're reading, she learns. And if you are speaking any spell she hears, she learns. So Okay, cool. Yes. Um, a bit more convoluted than how Docent had it, but I'm not complaining. It's a little bit more gamified than Austin's old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. she sees okay. it. So. Yeah. I'm content to leave this place. Um, yeah, we got what we need, right? Danny has the bag. Oh, I have the uh, bag? Yes. Those precious moments figures might be a little busted up. <laughs> yes, presumably. Um, let us go fetch Delphine and perhaps pose this plan. I lead the way. Very good. You make the short jaunt for you guys pretty short just a couple hours i think i said back mm -hmm. to yeoman and meet at a prescribed dock where delphine explained uh indeed you guys have spent quite a bit of time there so she's been hanging out and you land is oh i was beginning to worry perhaps that you had been waylaid somewhere or faced some difficulties were you successful in obtaining the package from our dear um she drinking like a mai tai or something, like sitting there with her bloody. Bag. Yeah, exactly. yeah, oh yeah, no, she's clearly drinking. <laughs> the glasses uh, are on. Dear Casimir is an interesting combination of words, but yes, we have it. Fascinating. Might I appraise to make sure this is correct? Please. Under the sack. We wish to know how many precious moments figurines there are. <laughs> she takes the bag, uh, opens it. Uh, you see some, like, smoke and a couple uh, uh, embers drift out. Excellent. Oh. Ties it back up. <laughs> Wraps it up. That's a new line well, of precious moments. I didn't realize that came with special effects. <laughs> can you indulge us? We took, you know, out of professionalism, didn't look ourselves, but if you would be so kind as to share the contents. Oh, certainly. Uh, she, uh, well, not here, uh, boards Sorry. the ship follow her uh goes below and uh into i it takes you into like the common room area the the, ki the uh not the kitchen the dining area dining um area. and you see she uh opens the bag and she doesn't grab it with her own hand she uses the bag to like as as a glove to place it down on the table uh and you see sure. it looks like um uh, a heart but it is mm, like like a cartoon heart or like sizes. a like a like a like a regular like a, a biological organic. Heart. You know yeah, where the precious yeah, moments are like... stored in the heart. <laughs> okay. It's like one point five to two times bigger than a Dang. human heart should be. Um, it is uh, it is black, smoldering like an, uh, a log that is covered in embers and giving off a little bit of smoke, uh, and still uh, uh, also still beating a little bit. <laughs> well. Huh. What Can I touch is it? it? It's the heart of a Tenari. Ten the devil's Tenari? It's, it's a demon heart. It's a, it's a demon heart. It's, it's a fucking demon? demon heart. If I poke it, oh. is it hot? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's definitely hot. You're okay. Touching it. Should we be worried about the company and the clients you keep, Delphine? 
Then believe me, if anything but. Uh, in order to create a sentient weapon, you require the heart of a powerful extraplanar creature, and certainly we would not want to be killing any Kyrie. <laughs> Where I'm from, that would have killed. Right. Huh. Well, do you need us to deliver the package as well, or will you sort that out on your own? Indeed, when it is convenient. I recognize that uh, there are many traveling, can take some time, so when next we stop uh, at a convenient place to send it along, I shall. Well, Where does it have to be? Meantime, though, there are other clients, and I will uh, speak with my peers about what work might be doing upon other planes that only we might be able to see to. One last thing I must ask. Uh, you were hired, commissioned by Otto to look over us? Quite the opposite. Our... I commission Otto myself oh. for the use of your ship and your services. So, if we were to be gone from Brass for, say, some extended period of time, he would have no choice but to assume that we were satisfying whatever it is you were asking of us. As long as my payments continue to be made on time. Why do you ask? I have a request. She looks at you, Virla, and quickly, telepathically to you, says, How would you like us to be, this to be played? <laughs> uh, and I respond to them. She's like, what do you want her, me to do? Her. Yeah. <laughs> Play it straight. Puppet I, will, master. I won't give much information. I won't give any information about our true goals. Very well. That shall be difficult to persuade. Uh, everyone else is here, right? I'm yeah, assuming. we're, yeah, we're all kind of the all heart, poking then, yeah. the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to poke the heart. I, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to convince Kiana to poke the heart. <laughs> I'm keeping the pseudo dragon away from the heart. <laughs> it's like Danny pokes it, and the heart just gives a like a double beat. <laughs> oh, oh, that's not good for it. <laughs> Freaky, <laughs> poke it again. Someone give the heart coffee. <laughs> I uh, I sit down um, at the table, and I just sort of like. I, start, I begin. Uh, I don't know if I actually told everyone. The deal that I made with Casimir is to switch out Docent with Emmy in its vessel. So, when I sort of tap to the vessel on my forehead, Ooh, huh. Emmy is in here now. Hi, everyone. Uh, Can they hear me? You know, like, they can't when there's a me. security camera and you Tell get them closer I say hi. to it, it's super fisheye lenses. Fair <laughs> Danny gets right up at Virla's face and, like, waves, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I think she can see you. <laughs> I can see you. But, Hi, um, Danny. Oh, I'm so curious, Virla. Can I try mind linking with her? <laughs> it might, it might miss and hit your brain instead. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> How could I ignore such a straightforward request? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, DM. What happens? <laughs> you want to link with Emmy? I want to link with Emmy. Yeah, Emmy's smart enough, and she has a she actually communicates yes. telepathically directly Fuck. to you, Virla. Um, <laughs> Emmy. Shit. Wait. So can we? Can I talk to Kiana by Kiana mind linking with Emmy? Or uh, yeah, you can't hear what Kiana's saying to Emmy, but you could then talk to Emmy. <laughs> it's a weird it's a game telephone. of telephone. Yeah, this yeah. is a little bit convoluted, but sure, we'll take we'll take it. How, how do you like it, Emmy? How's it going? This is strange. I've never had. I've never been in someone's mind before, and to have someone in my mind simultaneously while I'm inside their mind. Oh, that is kind little, of weird. Uh, I don't think I've ever done that either. It's kind of a kind of a weird hat on a hat situation going on in here. Hat on a hat. That's brilliant. Oh my god. I know. I'm so excited <laughs> to wear hats now that I have a body. This is so fun. I'm just like I I'm not saying any of this. I'm just like giggling now. <laughs> I can assume by your reaction, your conversation is good and Emmy. Yeah, that's great. Seems I wonder if the pseudo dragon can get in on this. Hello, buddy. Uh, oh my Kiana, I don't mean to. <laughs> no no thoughts. <laughs> oh, I know you can understand me. Uh, sorry. The, the point I was trying to make is, um, in transferring Docent's uh, consciousness, I suppose, programming into Casimir's house. He managed to unlock a fair bit more information than I than initially thought possible. To, to make a long story short, um, Docent does not hail from this planescape. There is an entire other planescape out there. Whoa. I do not even doubt it. Is, I don't know if it's smaller, but there 
already in my short time knowing it, there are already a number of uncomfortable parallels. There is a ship called the Ad Astra. Ooh. And a crew um, who came from the, from the other planescape to this one through much difficulty. Hmm. Um, their attempts to go back home were unsuccessful, and they eventually abandoned it. But in order to, for whatever reason, bury their work, they had locked the information within Docent, um, and they crashed the Ad Astra into the junk heap of Acheron. <laughs> I imagine yes, 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 Danny's yes. been poking the heart the entire time oh, no. as she stops Fully frozen. the second she hears that. Danny like whips her head around. <laughs> 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 the, the, the eye, the, the, plain the I, brand eye. The character yeah. have most wanted to return to and the layer I have most wanted to go to since season one, episode three. <laughs> so the original crew might still be around our planescape, right? Because they came here and they couldn't leave. Yes, um... The, the term that they use for themselves is war forged. Hmm. And in particular there was a they took an interest in us mechanites. And my memory is fuzzy, but from what Maxim from what Maxim had said, at least in our first encounter with him together, uh War forged and mechanites seem to be distantly related in some fashion. So if he they had... wanted to study mechanites, where would they go? Is there like a like a mechanite city? Like mechanite central university. <laughs> I, I mean, there's mechanists. It's mechanism. There are mechanites and mechanists? Maxim was a mechanite and mechanist. Maxim doesn't hang out with anybody. Or was he well, from mechanist? That, Maxim is a hermit and kind of the an except an exemption to the rule. But yes, there are there are mechanite societies and oh. mechanite towns and Hamlets, I suppose. Okay, that does uh, make sense. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to assume. <laughs> Not Fair a lot of mechanite food, though. Just... I suppose it is entirely possible that... I don't know how long ago it was. Docent, do you know how... No, fuck, Docent's oh. not here. <laughs> oh, Shit. it was bound to happen, but oh. it's still sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, buddy. It's okay, buddy. Um, Emmy just hears the little... <laughs> like, hold plug up behind Virla's <laughs> head can... and make him realize... Yes, Virla? <laughs> 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 the accordion body just <laughs> I, slinks down. Well, okay. In my haste and my excitement, I forgot to ask how long Docent had been decommissioned before. How long it had been how long had it been between Docent being decommissioned and then being recommissioned by me? And I the, think and you the... might have asked that, and the answer was, how would I know? Yeah, I, I, think, I think I was you didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well I had Clock asked was not um, running. I asked how long it was between me picking it up and uh, giving it to Maxim, but I don't know if I asked oh, the other one. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, but well, fair enough. I, I'd say you're you're smart enough to understand that. Like he means like he was off. He wouldn't know. He wouldn't know uh, how long to, how much time passed. The clock well, reset to like December thirteenth, nineteen eighty six, when he woke up. <laughs> Just like, yeah, oh, beans. He sort of wiped well, the gate himself. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is entirely possible that they are still living in and somewhere in this planescape, which is a slightly concerning thought. Um, but it's also entirely possible that this was millennia ago. You really do remember know. what Maxim said? The thing that you learned, actually, and spoken to Maxim about, and then he had, like, researched a little bit to find more information for you, mm -hmm. was that you were curious about Warforge and thought that there was more to it, and he was like, it's kind of like an old word that no one's really sure the origin it's kind of pejorative he's like but it, the, people have theorized it came from that, Acheron. that there was a brit that that the uh the mechanites might have originated in some sort of like bridge because they are uh, Acheron and mechanists are, are next to each other on the cosmic uh, yes. in the great wheel so that occasionally adjacent planes will connect to each other so that there might have been some connection and that that so that's why people have called them like war that they'd come from there and so people have been ancestors. like oh they were like they were made by war or whatever and so there was uh -huh. there was the notion set forth that that's probably what it was from and that your theory had been like there's actually a much deeper level to this and warforged is from somewhere beyond uh okay i don't think okay well 
I immediately dispel the thought that uh, <laughs> Warforged are distant ancestors, like, like direct, dis Mechanites are direct descendants of Warforged, because I think, the, if I remember right, the reason why, like, Warforged went to Mechanist was to study Mechanites and to sort of, like, meet with them. Docent mentioned that they were curious about the Mechanites. Okay. So, I don't think that's that. I don't know. There are a lot there's, of unknowns. There's definitely a sense, though, of, like, coincidences seem to line up, and, like, maybe you've got the pieces yeah. of the puzzle, but they're not fit yet, or something like that. But, um, what I was going to ask, if it suits everybody, is taking a bit of a detour to Brass, from Brass, to resume some of my old research, let's call it. And this would involve going to, to the giant junkyard that lives under the plane of Eternal War? <laughs> yes, Danny, this would involve going to the giant uh, junkyard and the plane of Eternal I'll go re-put in the coordinates. War. <laughs> I, I think Danny's in. I, I think that's a yes. Yes. Acheron was the Tiana. cube dimension, right? It was. It was where, okay. All right. That's where you punch the dragon. Yes. With Enoch, oh. it's a dragon. It's called the Eternal Battlefield, and your request is to take, after the first mission, to take leave to this place of eternal destruction and torment? Yeah, I mean, we've done it before. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> You have only just begun our work here. Uh, well, this is why I was asking if there is something else that you'd rather have us do. I am in no position to dispute. <laughs> you get the tell telepathy again. She's like, "How much hardball? How much hardball do you want me to play here?" <laughs> you kind of just gave up. Like, if there's anything else you want to do, we can do that instead. <laughs> I mean, it, if it's a wrecked ship that's been sitting in the junkyard for however long, it's probably not going anywhere fast. <laughs> that's what you That is true. <laughs> um, Sorry, not going anywhere fast until but, you get your hands on it. But Keep. Virla, you also know that she's here to facilitate your journey. So, like, yeah, it's up to she you. Just give you tasks I, if you if that's what you want. But <laughs> it's up to you. This is not. I didn't mention anything about my old crew. I didn't mention anything about Mistra, and. To be honest, I think it is only a matter of time before the rest of the crew knows Finbar is already catching on. Mm. I'm going to try and avoid that as much as possible. If only but... there was a way to detect telepathy. Very well. <laughs> you think that this is important to your quest? She says in your mind. So, Emmy, so if you could to... wear a hat, what kind of hat would it be? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, hold on. Go on, Bella. It is so far the closest connection that we have. Ad Astra Paraspera to the stars with difficulty. The, 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 single, the single phrase, the two ships. Well. It, it, there's too much of a coincidence to ignore. Very good, then. I was worrying it would take you some time before you began giving the orders to me, but I'm glad to see it has taken to you naturally. She speaks aloud now. She says, Well, give me a moment. She kind of like, her eyes kind of roll back a little. She takes a sip of her drink. Yes, I do believe that there is, uh, I've spoken to one of my colleagues, and I do believe that there is, uh, perhaps some, uh, wealth to be gained there. Assuming that, uh, we could make it worth our while in terms of, uh, uh, perhaps scavenged treasures, then I see no reason not to take a small detour. Our next stop is not, uh, um, time pertinent, so to speak. Well, I am glad that you found an, a client with whom our, our interests are aligned. This isn't going to be no. This is going to be nothing but a scavenger hunt, and a scavenging. Indeed, I must ask. Endeavor. If what you say is true, you are looking for a single ship amongst an entire world. How do you intend to locate this needle within a haystack? What a wonderful question, Delphine. So, is it probably using <laughs> similar technology to what's on this ship, or is there sort of like a? Is this completely an? That unknown? is actually that is actually an interesting point. Um. Their ship is not called a Spelljammer, it is called a Skyship. And in asking Docent, it is the only Skyship of its kind to be able to travel across planes. So it probably has a helm kind of like, well, maybe not like ours, but that well, would do the same thing. Something if the modified, magic yes. ain't from this planescape, we'd be able to tell it just by looking at the magic, right? We would. Different schools of true. magic well, put out different auras, but it depends on if wait, the magic. Can... magic. <laughs> well, no, we have to detect it, but I assume by volunteering that information, one of the two more spelly guys in the ship could probably do that. Well, if that were the case, 
and I don't know if that's going to work anymore. But I still have the vessel that Docent came in. If you detect magic on... If you detect magic now, perhaps the vessel might emit some sort of different magic? It might be worth a shot. Are you... You're speaking... Uh, Emmy, no, actually, you don't have to speak to... Emmy is uh, her own person. She doesn't need you to call her like Docent does. Um, mm -hmm. Emmy says... Oh, that's an interesting notion. Whew. I don't Big know if hunt on my first day out. It's so exciting. <laughs> uh, Emmy is capable of casting detect magic at yes. will, like Dosen mm -hmm. was. So she could theoretically, as long as you are at the front, uh, like looking, she could theoretically keep it up forever. Right. Um, I think it's possible with the right adjustment that I might be able to look for a similar magical energy. How could I put this into mundane words? I might be able to I don't know, sense a similar frequency to that used by Docent. Uh, I got a pretty good study of him while you were within the house. Um, I, I don't know if to I would be able to track it, or but I would probably I would definitely know it when I saw it. Very well, surely. So if the we giant get, jump like, cube can't be that large. If we could get like, <laughs> a, if we could use my ability and get like a bearing or something, then I could definitely. Or if we just search around, I could definitely know it when I see it. Right, I do agree. It is a bit of a. I do agree. It's it's, it's going. It's a big ask. I. It was it was a lot to ask even in the first place, and I'm eternally grateful that you agreed. But we don't know what we're looking for ultimately. We're still in Bytopia, right? Like, there's a big market outside. If do, Can we buy anything that could help with, like, divining? <laughs> I think if we go to the scrapyard, they might have a way of... There might be people there that are better at sifting through that scrapyard. <gasps> Over there? So we'd Vindor's be getting help good from, point. from demons <laughs> in uh, Acheron? Well, okay. Uh, another <laughs> interesting... So an interesting point, um, because this is information you would all be pretty familiar with at the point at this point there are definitely people who live you know uh regular mortal people who live all over the planescape uh wherever there's a way to get by people are scraping by right that's the nature of sentient beings sapient uh <laughs> oh, we have to go back to Jakku. yeah uh that wherever wherever it's possible there are people scraping by uh so it's definitely possible that there are people there who might be able to help you keeping in mind that each plane is cosmically aligned with its, you know, with, with its alignment and its, you know, its purpose within the planescape, uh, and that the rules, so to speak, the the how much a plane is like itself goes up, not uh, uh, linearly as you go through planes, but exponentially. So right. you've only been to the second level layer of a world once. And it's the Beastlands, which is all, already, like, not too bad a place. Um, and you had a guide. So it, that was, like, fairly easy. But, you had, like, you had literally someone to get you from A to B as fast as possible. But I met if, you know, if the first layer of Acheron, whose name I forget, is a 1 on the Acheron scale, the second layer is going to be a 10, and the third oh, is going to be so a cool. 100. <laughs> so, right. keep him. So oh, that's... Boy. The, the it's the same for hell, right? Like it's exponential. Yeah. Avernus, as bad as Avernus is, is a one Ooh. on the hell scale. Yeah. And then Dis, who's the second layer, is a 10. And it goes like up and up and up exponentially. So keeping in mind, that's the danger level you guys are walking into if you go to the second layer of Excellent. Acheron. Yes. Like I said, it was a big ask. I don't... I don't know... After the fiasco in Brass, maybe... We should possibly think about whether or not we are equipped enough to go. <laughs> you alright, Danny? The big junkyard, but he's right. <laughs> no, okay. Well, we go we're going to go. I think she's leaking. <laughs> we're going to go, Danny. I mean, that's. I think. I think we've agreed on that. It's just whether or not we need to go now. There are a number of things that we need to do. First of all, we don't know where the ship is within within the plane. We don't know how to get to the plane from the first layer. Uh, to the second layer from the first layer. And then, yes, there is the matter of 
getting I don't equipped. like splitting um, uh, the spoils of war or academic credit with anyone, but maybe we could find a guide to Acheron the same way we did to the Beastlands. I imagine a good starting point for that might be Sigil. Yeah, well, uh, we could also check in with Maxim first. I feel like Virla just learned some very interesting stuff about the stuff they were collaborating with before anyway, and Maxim might have some way to find something on a on a plane, and the whole thing we're talking about with Warforged and Mecha Knights, if we want to check out Mechanists at some point with lower stakes anyway, it, we might want to go there first. That's not a bad idea. Yay. Or we can just sort of say, let's leave this for another time and do whatever Delphine's client Delphine, is asking. Delphine, what is your client asking? <laughs> Well, I'd have to sort through. I have the Marcanes have a myriad connection between many people. I have to see what is most pressing and most. Uh, if you critical. were to give us an estimate of something that would maybe take, I don't know, about an hour and a half of D and D playtime in the second half of an episode, like what would you say we're looking at? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. Your producer is shining. (laughs) Your producer is showing. I'm multi-classing in production. (laughs) Take one negative inspiration. Uh, Seeing as I currently have none, that would make me... Next time I get one, I just zero out, I guess. Uh, No, it means that you got to roll two dice and take the lower. (laughs) You get to choose one. The safer route would be Mechanus. And I would agree with that, Kiana. But I really want to go. I mean, if you guys think we're ready, I mean, I don't know what's down there. Stuff. But we could. We would need to agree on an exit plan. Because what we could do. I don't know how close the cubes are to each other in the first layer, but we can maybe post up in a place that is relatively far away from some cubes. Wait for the, uh, wait for the plane ship, plane shift to recharge, and then, you know, it, it might recharge on our way to. Acheron yeah. or our, in our time well, you can always for the second sail, layer. Keep in mind, get, plane shifting to the Astral Sea really helps you, but you can always sail back out of the portals you sailed into. Also, so, like, if you get... just decide that you're not going to plane shift out of Bytopia, you're just going to sail to the exit, and yeah. then you're going to sail to the entrance to Mechanus, oh, yeah, that's true. and then sail back out. Like, you, you, we, know, we'll always you have can theoretically never route. use the plane shift. It's just very convenient. Also, oh, yeah, how true. do we uh, get to the second layer of Acheron? Right, that's probably... That's, like, that's that's good. Layers are uh, doors are hidden, but the good thing is it's a lawful plane, which means that the doors are stable. So in the chaotic planes, the doors between level layers change around. In the lawful planes, they stay where they are. So, or at least the method, because like uh, it's not doors. For example, in seven, uh, the seven heavens of Mount Celestia, it's not doors. It's philosophical enlightenment, but mm-hmm. it's it's stable. You know, it doesn't change up on you. So we could do research on how to enter the second layer. We can go into Bytopia uh, to Yeoman and perhaps ask if there is someone who is familiar with that. More likely than not, an actual guide would be found in the first layer of Acheron. So we could just say fuck it and go there to begin with. And assuming that we survive, um, we would have a guide. Last time we were in Acheron, we were being chased by the Gith. Um... Yes. They might know how to get around there. Mm, how about we don't do that, okay? Well, we, the the gift didn't take us into Acheron. We but took the gift there, no right? Problem. They chased us through the uh, portal. They chased you into the nearest portal was to Acheron, uh, and they chased oh. you into it. Yes. Oh, I guess that. So that was design. That was by design. Like they wanted us to go into Acheron, mm, or no? You fled. They kind we of ran expected you into to be sitting portal. ducks that they could kill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, we fled into the portal, they followed. Right, so they yeah, might not necessarily... they're necess- badass. Mm. Gith, any Gith, might not necessarily know um, the ins and outs of Acheron. Uh, perhaps going to Maxim's is the best idea. There we can ask... There we can fill him in on the information um, that we had just learned. And then perhaps learn some information regarding how to get to the second layer. Uh... Delphine, and there is also the possibility that a client of yours, um, after performing a favor for them, could reward us with knowledge of the second layer into, you know, second layer of Acheron. 
Seems rather Ooh, specific, but... Curious, sort of a do a job in order to get information for another job. Yes. She kind of pauses, does that, like, eye-rolling thing again. She goes, I've put out some feelers for anyone who might know information about Archeron. Ooh, well, perhaps that is something we can do in an hour and a half. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, Danny, but... I have answered your question. For the yes and noir, as always, I can count on you to help my stupid bits be even funnier. For now. I I don't know what to do for now. That sounds like we're either going on another job or going to Mechanist. So I guess the question is, do we have another job or are we going to Mechanist? I'm so curious about other Mechanites. I'm trying not to be weird about it, but that's so cool. Me too. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I think Mechanist is a good first stop. Um, and it'll be much easier to get to Akron for a mechanism from literally any other place, unless this job is already lined up. Uh, but no, I think well, that's you flirt with me with how fast you think I work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very well then. Mechanist is is the, right, is the most. You're gonna go talk. Mechanist to Max- is the clearest heading that we have. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not Akron, not yet. No, Mechanist. Sorry. Mechanist first. <laughs> Very well. Yeah. I'm going to keep sipping my drink right here. <laughs> Very well. We will be off. Um, so wait, are we I leaving guess... Delphine and Bytopia? No, no she, I'm she's... coming with you. Yeah. She's here with us. Why? She, wait, she... what? Okay, hold on. Sorry. I'm just she's coming We're having you. this conversation okay, on I'm going to stay here yeah, sipping my drink. Yeah. Had me confused. Oh, she's, okay. She's, yeah, you guys are sitting in the, in the dining room right now. Yeah, I, um, I know. She's like yeah. so big on these tiny little chairs, by the way. She's like 12 feet tall. <laughs> so... She's just like, do I have a picture actually? Okay, I got a picture of her. Ooh, visual oh, aid. Huh. <laughs> Very oh, useful for our uh, audio only format. I'll, yes. I'll send a picture. Anyway, uh, it sounds like we have heading. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take our break right here. Fantastic. And we will see you guys back very shortly. Rolling with difficulty. Today's adventure is brought to you by World Anvil. World Anvil is a browser-based world-building tool designed to help you, the creator, write and world-build, all while keeping your work organized and in one place. World maps, calendars, customizable wikis, visual timelines, and more let you decide how best to build your world. And when you're ready to write, look no further than the built-in word processor. You can write your prose directly in World Anvil and keep every step of the process in one place. We all know TTRPGs are all about the power of friendship, and with real-time collaboration, you can work with your players or other creators on the same project. On top of all that jazz, World Anvil recently rolled out a new feature called Whiteboards. This visual canvas allows creators to freely draw out their ideas, adding diagrams, flowcharts, mood boards, and more. If you're a more visual creator, this feature is perfect for you. You can chart out character arcs, storyboard key scenes, doodle your character holding hands with somebody else's character, or whatever else you need to help make the story you see in your mind come to life. Interested? Of course you are! And it only gets better, because for our listeners, World Anvil is offering a special discount. Just use code PLUG at checkout for 40% off a yearly membership. Hi, I'm Austin, and thank you for listening to Rolling with Difficulty. We've been thrilled to have you tagging along for the adventures of the Paraspora. Rolling with Difficulty recently launched a new way to support the podcast, our Patreon. In addition to helping make this program possible, patrons get access to all sorts of bonus content directly from myself and from the rest of the cast, so save those wish rings for later. Rewards include monthly Discord hangouts, additional character and NPC info, bonus stories from the Planescape, art sheets, and more. Right now, new patrons will even have access to our special launch bonus, the playtest for the College of Feasts Bard subclass, inspired by our very own Elise. Check out the link in the description below to browse these and all the benefits awaiting patrons, and thank you to everyone for supporting Rolling with Difficulty. We'll see you out there on the Astral Sea. Rolling with Difficulty. And welcome back. When last we left our heroes, you depart for the Clockwork Nirvana Mechanist. At this point, the portal is known enough to you and the journey known enough. Is there anything you would like to do over the several hours, many hours, that will comprise the journey of sailing? Uh, it's only it's only like 20 minutes to sail out of Bytopia because you're very mm-hmm. close to a portal by Yeoman. But then there will be many hours in the Astral Sea, followed by a little bit of time within the plane of Mechanus. Is there anything anyone would like to accomplish during this time? Have we possibly accumulated a long rest's worth of hours since... The uh, you down. guys can all take a long rest during this time. Yes. Can I, uh, can I seek out Danny? <gasps> it's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you left Danny behind in Bytopia. No. Oh, oh, Home Alone with Danny would be an awesome episode. <laughs> <laughs> 
Haven't we oh, already God. seen that play? Uh, uh, <laughs> Danny, where does Vila find you? I'm in the engine room, same as always. Mm -hmm. Any luck with Lucky Bolt? Well, let's see. Throw a bolt at the uh, motive force generator. Uh... So I have new mechanics for how this works. Uh, I'm considering once per adventure, you can try a lucky bolt. And I, adventure is, you know, typically an episode. Sometimes it's a little bit more for you guys. But uh, so go ahead and roll a d6. If you roll a six, you trigger a lucky bolt reaction. Ah, uh, three. Sorry, buddy. No, no lucky bolts today. Sorry. Oh, well, uh, perhaps for the best. I don't know what else would happen to us. if. Anyway, um, I, I wanted to sort of apologize for um, any perceptions of, of reservations or holding back back at the house. Um, we had sort of differing opinions regarding Emmy, and it caused me to sort of not act in a way that I might have should have. I maybe should have. I hope you're okay in the end. Yeah, I'm all right. I only got punched by the robot a bunch, but, uh, you know, <laughs> there was context that we didn't have, and now... Uh, I'm not dead, so I'm gonna call it a win. We're good. And what are your thoughts of Emmy? Mm, she seems fine. Uh, I assume, like many extremely sheltered people, which we seem to be uh, familiar with that particularly cadre of individuals, <laughs> she'll experience the world and maybe know it's not a good idea to punch random strangers anymore. I think that is a very good first lesson to have, Emmy. <laughs> so far, I haven't had to punch anyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But Emmy, if you get into a bar I, fight, you do throw the first punch because that's how you dominate the situation immediately. I don't understand. Don't don't Always that. dominate the situation. I don't. Here, you that. swear you hear in your head. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well, the, this next question, you you may have discouraged me from asking this next question, but how would you feel about integrating Emmy into our ship eventually? I mean, it's a fascinating proposal because currently the ship doesn't have any sort of internal AI. I would want to ha create some sort of partition to make sure that any one individual or consciousness couldn't, like, hijack the whole thing, but I think the concept of, like, I don't know, somebody able to make coffee in the morning before Finbar gets up would be pretty cool. I could fly? fly? You could fly. Yeah, I guess you could. Oh. I wouldn't recommend the coffee, given uh, Casimir's experiences with food. <laughs> but, um, it, it, this is a long-term thing. I know that, like, at least judging from what Casimir did, you would we would probably have to integrate magic into the Paraspera board by board, basically. Yeah, it would and be that's an going undertaking. to take a while. I can start working on some drafts. Uh, I got some reference material. Let's see if we can uh, maybe do it on like a limited basis. There might be a way to put her in parts of the ship first before the whole thing gets eventually turned over. But you know, I think it was. I see no reason not why idea. not to do it. I just don't think it's something we can get done immediately. But I, uh... Oh, I didn't expect to. I like to. the challenge. And anything that guy could do, I bet I could do better. So I'll work on it. I don't doubt it. And <laughs> I say this with all the seriousness in the world. You are better company than Casimir. In spite of all of your faults and who you are <laughs> fundamentally as a person. <laughs> What is happening with Virla today? <laughs> Inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> I... He's very arrogant, and he's not afraid to show it. And I'd normally like to be polite, but he pushed my buttons enough. Mm. I had to get verbal. Ooh, like you did with Davian that one time? That was funny. That was that was a spur of the moment, and that was more to elicit a laugh out of people, but... Ah... <laughs> uh. You've learned so much from me. <laughs> I really have. Uh, yeah, that was really all I asked. I, I wanted to ask, so. Yeah, I mean, I'll work on it. That's no problem. Fair enough. Um, and I, I know I did it in the group, but I also wanted to apologize for Otto and the. I even I don't remember what the ore's name is anymore, but the whole thing with the volcano and the. Yeah. I don't. It wasn't a good it could, situation for it could anyone. Have, it could have gone better, and part of that was because of me, that it didn't, so. But we're okay? We're good, yeah. Okay. I leave. <laughs> Alright. 
Is there anything else anyone would like to do? I... Kian, you still have a nameless drag. Sorry, go on. Someone's gonna do something. I have fleece and a lens now. <gasps> I'd like to Is maybe get happen? started on my little side see? project, if at all possible. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, Austin has to take a second and go back through his notes to figure out where I wrote all that shit down. What was that? How long ago Austin did you can... decide to do this project? Hold on. Uh, so season Austin can one. look up this information a lot faster if he had World Anvil. <laughs> World Anvil lets you keep all Today's your notes sponsor. organized and in one place. Um, all right. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, so go ahead and make me a tools check. <laughs> I'm so scared. 27. Danny. It blows up. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all that work wasted. You need a new RAM. <laughs> Where is... Hold on. Danny's next solo oh, adventure is just like... <laughs> A safari in the beast lands. <laughs> if only you had just a little bit of fleece that you maybe didn't leave behind as a calling oh card in Captain Mirror's house. We got a re-heist. What are you making, man? What is this? Don't worry about it. Ten gold says it's an Archimedes death ray. <laughs> oh. You... Uh, or look, you take the lens, uh, you begin to tinker, uh, inscribing runes, building uh, what you know, the, the, sort of the arcane equivalent of, like, you know, wiring right creating mm -hmm. connections between magical items you know the importance of the physical item in conveying the magic it makes it much easier uh, instead of having to hold the spell within your head uh, and you know conjure it the materials do that for you it's the same process by which magic items uh, work but you are a, uh, a crafter and you understand the uh, that uh, a sword with a plus one bonus is, is barely scratching the surface you begin to put together uh, the uh, and, and you're looking to install it in the like the helm, right? Like, yeah, by the helm. or maybe in that like free room we've got on the first level. Totally cool. Yeah. You have, uh, you're looking through it, and things are coming together really well. Uh, you sort of the lens goes um, uh, on top, and then the fleece is carefully. Uh, cut and you, you have you actually have a lot of it so you're yeah. able to kind of like build a redundancy like uh this this is for real i kind of exp uh, uh my assumption was you try and like buy it somewhere getting it from straight from the source <laughs> uh you have a lot more than you need so you're actually able to I build know how in to some source like source my materials <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're able to you're able to like build in some redundancy here with like just the amount of fleece that you're stitching into the overall frame that you've constructed, which would just require basic metals and stuff like what that. What is it? Um, you're going through here with a 27. Mm -hmm. You have what you need. You're looking at how much fleece you have and the quality of your craftsmanship here, and you're like, there's a push. I could make I could like upgrade this. Ooh. If I just had a little, if I just had something else, it's like if I like it'll work now. But if I want this to be per, like better, like as, if I want to live up to its potential, there's like <laughs> one more ingredient I need to this soup. Do I have an inkling safe. of what that ingredient might be? Because Danny is 100% the kind of character that's gonna hold out to push it a little better if it's something she thinks she can get her hands on. Demon heart. Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> You're going to need. Hang on a sec. What is this? You'll see. Can Don't worry about it. Hold on. I have to look up what this is. Give me a second. What I'm is this? evidently this flying the ship yeah. if you're wandering around hanging out with people. So. I would assume that we're like trading off every so often. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we don't, it doesn't have to be like eight hours, eight hours, you know? You think if you, if you want this to really do what you uh, need it to, mm -hmm. or what, like what it, what it could do, you're thinking you're going to need, it's like, um, really what you need is an... <laughs> gum arabic but like that's not it's that's simplistic you're gonna need th that's like li literally it's the glue that's gonna hold this whole thing together uh in a sense but it's gonna need to be pure you're gonna need some sort of like adhesion that is supreme in order to uh get this thing up to okay. crank it up to where it needs to be sovereign glue. so like put down adhesive uh or gum like literally gum not in the chewing gum sense but gum from like a yeah. tree Okay. Yeah. Danny but, but will start now? to prep but everything. But if you can find... 27, everything else is done. If you can find that, there's no more checks. It goes in, it works. Awesome. Okay, Danny will like, do all that prep that then, and then just kind of in her uh, little 
<laughs> little scrap of paper she's got like crumpled up in one of her trench coat pockets un unfolded unwrinkle the whole thing and just scribble in adhesive <laughs> and check off the other two boxes and then shove it back in her pocket and that's all on that for now suffer is noir it <laughs> is it ready who knows you said it not yet. You don't get to know well, yet. If, if Danny wants to reveal what it can do right now and then what it will do later, she can figure out. But it's up to it's up to Danny, really. It's so the much better. better. Secret it's weapon. Secret Fuck you, man. Little, <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> little Please. dramatic reveal for later. I beg of you. <laughs> it turns some starship into a Gundam. That'll help we us all pilot it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Amazing. Uh, uh, anyone else have other things they want to get done on this journey? I have one more thing, but I'll cede the floor if anyone else needs something. Do Kian or Finbar have things they want to take care of? Uh, not particularly. I would have uh, prepped my spell list and uh, been probably in the driver's seat for most of the time. Cool. You make your way down through the familiar colored pool. I forget what the colored pool actually is to get to Mechanus. Um, Go listen to season one, make... episode three, for more yeah. on that description. <laughs> <laughs> That's Akron. Mm. Uh, <laughs> oh, go listen to season one, episode <laughs> season seven, one, episode for more seven. on that description. Seven. Yeah, pretty there embarrassing, we go. honestly. <laughs> Silver. Oh, no, diamond. It's diamond. Uh, hmm. I don't know what diamond so color is. Clear? I guess sparkly. Huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Shimmering like quartz almost. You sail through, make yourself, uh, find yourselves back within the clockwork nirvana of Mechanist, the familiar. Virla, you know the direction, and uh, this is a world that, m largely populated by Modrons, is not uh, terribly um, uh, malicious. It would be very hard to navigate if you did not have a big flying ship. Hmm. Uh, but this is your third voyage there at this point, Virla, at least. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it was ever established if you visited again in the downtime between seasons one and two, but uh, this is at least your third voyage, so there's no, we're not going to do any... Um, checks on like navigation you guys were able to navigate there Virla. uh as i'm piloting and guiding the ship it's been more than an hour right kiana's mind yes. link is down oh yeah, yes. yeah, yeah it's don't worry about that okay i'm gonna <laughs> I mean, go and see I we're just Danny. excitedly talking hours. about hats like some the people whole have time. slept at this point like, yeah, yeah okay gotcha you have, you've had meals definitely uh as sneaky, i'm as i'm sneaky. helming the ship i'm just gonna go speak to emmy emmy yes uh there is something that you should know uh, if... Ooh, I love learning things. I'm glad you do. Um, you may hear me be in communication with someone that you possibly might not see. Or if it is someone that you see, you will know who I'm talking about. I'm sorry I'm being very vague. There's not much that I can disclose right now. And that's my own choice. Um, Are we keeping a secret? I would ask that you do. Oh, she's so fucking cute. I love her so much. I love she's the first secret I've ever asked to, sh been sh to keep. I mean, I had the Mr. secret Pumpus. of Casimir in the pantry, but no one asked me to keep that. I kept it myself. <laughs> yes. Okay, can I ask you to keep this one as well? It's only if... It's only if I ever do communicate with her again. I would love to. I'm not sure Thank who's going to speak to me, since largely I can only talk to you, but... Well, Kiana has... Kiana has the ability, and... True. I... And eventually, I would like you to be able to speak with the rest of the crew. You know, I, I the the idea is that if you are integrated within the ship, you could speak freely to any of us, similarly to how you uh, inhabited Casimir's house. So, with hope, this arrangement that we have is temporary. Yeah, I'm not really certain. I could imagine a scenario where it goes on forever, but in the meantime, I'm happy to be along for the ride. I appreciate it. Don't worry that. about me. Thank you. And that's it. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep right. piling the ship. Oh, Emmy's not a narc. Hell yeah. <laughs> How what could Emmy be a narc? What if she was just like so straight edge? She was like, <laughs> I don't feel comfortable doing this. We gotta tell everyone immediately. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she might do that once the thing actually happens. I don't know. I also don't know if like me seeing Mistra is like a thing in my own eye. So like, Emmy can't see it. I don't know. Guess you'll find out, huh? Yeah, yeah. Probably. <laughs> anyway, to Maxims. Yes, the, what it would normally be an impossible to traverse, a near impossible to traverse sea of ticking cogs and gears. Instead is a 
pretty simple for you guys. You just kind of have to fly around things a lot of times. It's not really a straight line A to B, but even so, you find yourself back at a familiar place. Kiana, you recognize the landing step where you once got kidnapped? Hey, good times. <laughs> Everyone else, you recognize the, you know, very structured shape. The, uh, I think it's six, I can't remember six or eight sided, uh, the house six. of the Maxim. And you debark, uh, disembark, approach. I speak uh, the password, Emerson. The door, the arcane lock disarms, the doors creak open where once you fought and lockpicked to try and get in, now you are welcome guests. You enter into the main hall, the fate bing, bing, from the alarm spell. Go- oh, I think, actually, I think the alarm is, is disengaged by the spell as well. It's Yeah. So you enter... The door is closed behind you. What would you like to do? Uh, traditionally, do I wait for Maxim for him to sort of receive me, or do we just kind of make our way? Usually, make he shows at home? up pretty quickly, but he's, <laughs> he's, uh, he doesn't enter at this time. Oh, huh. Well, mm-hmm. I'm sure he won't mind if he receives us in his study foyer place. You know, the the Balhanath stage. Yes, as we the know. place oh. you have you've did the uh, talking to a devil. Yes. You did yep. the what now? Um, <laughs> I didn't say anything. I don't <laughs> know what's up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I'll, uh... a minute or two passes and unsure you make your way down the hall uh, and find yourself in the room that uh, all of you have seen before. Indeed, the place where the illusion you once fought a ball went off and now you know to be Maxim's sort of like casual study. You enter, kind of look around. Things are more or less how you left them, Virla. There sure. are, you know, books and racks of these orbs on the wall. The uh, uh, the sparse entertainment area sits wherever where it was. Um, you hear from across the room, uh, Virla, I did not expect to return so soon. Uh, and you see... You uh, actually, Finbar's passive perception would pick this up. Uh, yeah. Finbar, you see walking out of the clockwork staff on the table a miniaturized Maxim who steps <laughs> off the table, releases concentration on shrink, and grows back up to normal mechanite size. Oh, that's so cool! Did he step oh, off the yes. table, or is that just one really sturdy table? <laughs> okay. My weight is severely diminished when I am under the effects of this spell. Forgive me, I did not hear you come in. It is inappropriate for a guest not to, uh, for a host not to greet his guests at the door. Well, you were obviously preoccupied. I hold no ill will. Do you, um, how'd, how'd you get that small? I, I know I, it's possible to shrink things, but I, I, I've never seen someone go that small. It is an uh, interesting story involving negotiations with the devil. Oh. Indeed. I assume Vila has not informed you, but... I haven't had the time. <laughs> Why would you assume that, Max? <laughs> Interesting. What keeps you so busy? Uh, the prospera. I don't know if Delphine's a. I don't know if Delphine came with us actually, but if she's uh, here, I'll... good question. Would you have invited her? Uh, yeah, sure. I bet you accepted. Forgive yeah. me. I do not know this. Who you bring with you? What is your name? Her... Yeah. <laughs> um, it is a pleasure to meet you. They inform me you are called Maxim. My name is Delphine, keeper of scrolls and histories. Very well, Delphine, keeper of scrolls and histories. Since you are now alive, the crew of the Prosper, I welcome you to my home. Do not make the mistake of allowing me to regret it. <laughs> Certainly not. Very well. What can uh, I do for all of you? Not much, actually. There might be something we can do for you. The first time that we had met again, uh, at least the crew of the Paraspera met you, um, you had discussed that I had given you Docent, and with your intention to study it further, to maybe unlock any further information that may hold within. Uh, inadvertently, we have done so. Uh, I will say, uh, part of the reason why is because Docent no longer inhabits this. 
point and I point to the you know vessel in my forehead. Uh, inside is a different arcane intelligence crafted by an artificer here, uh, or an artificer in Bytopia, rather. We had traded arcane intelligences. Uh, this one was a little murdery. Uh, hey, so that's I have, not fair. I'm told this happens. <laughs> well, I have elected to uh, give her the opportunity to see the world, uh, albeit in a little bit, a little bit more restrained circumstances. Uh, and in return, Casimir will sift through the information in Docent and in however way he can, send it to me to be able to peruse at my own leisure. But what we have found, um, I do not know the extent of which I had spoken with you when I first gave you Docent, but my sus my suspicions about it and the general suspicions of another planescape are true. Docent had revealed this explicitly. It originally hailed, not from a spelljammer, but from a skyship called the Ad Astra. A different planescape that made the journey to ours, but cannot make its return journey. I do not know how long this was. All I know is that their members have scattered, intentionally locking away the information behind Docent and crashing their ship into the second layer of Acheron. I figured because uh, these were the grounds for us first meeting, I thought you might know. Want to know, rather. Indeed. This changes a great many things. That supports a great many theories that have been cultivated not only by myself, but others. This information will need to be carefully guarded and disseminated. But, for the moment, congratulations, friend Birla. It appears that you unlock some mysteries that you yourself do not know you are seeking to find. Apparently, yes. Uh, a few things came up to me. The alarming parallelisms had been noticed between their planescape and ours. Um, they were called Warforged, the crew of the, Parasp uh, the, crew of the Ad Astra. They did not have a spell jammer they called. They inhabited a skyship. As I understand, skyships do not have the ability, traditionally, to navigate between planes, but the crew had modified theirs to be able to do so. Uh, in our terms, it is, the, it is the first spell jammer of its kind. And then, there, of course, there is the phrase, Ad Astra Paraspera. Uh, also, and this is new information, the person who had originally held docent was another scribe a warforged named vigil and i do not know how much further i wish to draw this connection of parallelism but i must confess it is difficult to ignore i do not know what to make of any of this our next course of action is to make our way into the second layer of Acheron, but that might be some time later. I do not know if we are strong enough, first of all. And there is the inst and there is the matter of finding an entrance to the second layer to begin with. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you have much to consider. Indeed, questions are answered. The origin of the phrase forged. I'm sure there are some deeper histories to be consulted, but indeed, given if there's a deed brought by the second crew who moved their ship in Acheron, that would explain many connected but contradictory rumors about the origins of such a pejorative phrase. Yes. It would also suggest that this it would also suggest that this crew came long, long ago. Perhaps time moves strangely within the worlds. Perhaps uh, a True. similar effect has been had between them. Difficult to say until we have more information. Yes. Which, should you learn, I would be happy to learn in turn. In and the I meantime, will have... you require passage to Acheron. 
That is one of the things on our checklist, yes. Well, you have provided me a great bountiful information, whether you are aware of it or not. I have a trifle that perhaps shall aid you in such a journey. One moment. Oh. He leaves, uh, he goes to his treasure room, he comes back with Ooh. a tuning fork. Hey. Oh, wow, all right. <laughs> a great collection of such items, should they ever be required by myself or another. This is a tuning fork attuned to the eternal battlefield of Acheron. Should you use it within your ship, Paraspora, it will transport you to the first layer. However, there is a strange phenomenon between Mechanus and Agaron, indeed between many planes who border each other philosophically. It is not unusual for a portal to emerge between them. Normally this would be between corresponding layers the first to the first, the second to the second, but Mechanus comprises but one layer. Because of this, it might be possible to locate a portal from Mechanus to the second layer of Acheron. Hey! <laughs> now we're talking. Simply okay. using a tuning fork to cast Plane Shift will not do. You will need yes. to use the tuning fork to locate the opening between yourself mm. and the second layer of Acheron. Oh, this was a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> this. Oh, he would call he would call with his uh Thulden. You just locate a portal to Thulden in. Thulden Thulden in. Thulden in. It's uh T H U L D A N I N. Another one. Your for naming the conventions, video. man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hold on. Gotta write right. them down. There well, go. so that's layer two, and that's the yes, the the endless scrapyard. Well, <laughs> that solves one of our issues, but there's still the matter of locating the ship in Thuldenen once we have arrived there. No easy task. Indeed, there are locate object spells, but that ranges. I wonder if there's a way to make like an amplifier small. for a spell like that. That was uh, that that was what I was going to ask if you know of any way to do so. Innately, I might be able to do so, but uh, such abilities are relegated to the born with talent in the arcane arts. Hmm. Hmm. Certainly would be possible. The rules of spells are bent often. Is it a situation... You allow us to know. Is it a situation where maybe, like, we just need a bigger power source to bump the range up? Because we fly around in a giant oh generator of magical energy. And if we could, like, from the ship, maybe, by divert some of the flow from the mode of force generator, maybe we could make, like, a, an amplification effect or something. I think if we do that, he probably isn't getting this tuning fork back. <laughs> Forgive well, no, that, me. That would be once uh, we arrive in speak of matters for which I'm no longer an expert. It seems you yourself are already more informed on the matter than I am. I would hesitate to give you bad information as a result. Very well. Have you any experience with Thultanen, personally or anecdotally? A co-worker? A professional? I have never been, no. Nor do I like... Nor do I enjoy to make contact and alliance with those who ally themselves with eternal battle. Fair enough. There are foolhardy folk. And in our caution, the final thing on our checklist is assessing whether or not we are prepared to enter at all in the state that we are in now. Um, there are things more powerful than us, and as evidenced by the encounter we had of the Githyanki in the city of Brass, they are not hard to find. Surely, entering the second layer of the eternal battlefield 
will attract unsavory folk. I'm hesitant to say that I'm hesitant to say that maybe we will be okay, so long as we have the ability to plane shift out. It gives a quick exit. But indeed. You should still putting ourselves at some risk. If your ship remains properly attuned to your tuning fork and has the prerequisite energy, you should be able to leave hastily. But I confess, though I know little, I am certain that getting where you need to be will be an uphill battle. Yes. I think as long as we find the portal from here, and we don't need to use our plane shift, so we keep it in the back pocket to escape, we'll probably be okay. I agree. Mm -hmm. That was what I was thinking as well. Indeed. It is a great boon to be able to travel directly to Thluden and not search for a portal from the first layer to the second. You avoid what I am told is um, a nightmare of cubes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Perhaps uh, you will be right at home in the second layer then. I'm gonna be. I think convincing her to leave is gonna be the hardest part. <laughs> It'll be a vacation for her. Uh, Touch nothing while you are here. <laughs> Danny was moments from poking whatever the nearest surface was. <laughs> yeah. Slowly reels the finger back. <laughs> so there's still the matter of finding the Ad Astra once we're in Thuldenin, but I sort of think I sort of think inward. Some things well, we, our best uh, to uh, do uh, uh, yeah, in steps. I say we Perhaps. get there first, yeah. um, and the task may be easier. Uh, after all, it is a ship, not from this planescape. Uh, that it is shouldn't true. be that hard to find among endless scrap. No, you are right, Finbar. Uh, Unless it's as... all just spelljammers, in which case... <laughs> <you know. laughs> in which case we're never leaving because Danny will never make us. Exactly. Understood. You guys can leave. It would be very funny to there. turn... <laughs> but imagine if we go back to the City of Brass with like eight other spelljammers in tow. <laughs> just like, all uh, which one auto. is yours? What the fuck do you think of that? <laughs> Keep your eye uh, on the shell. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, you are right, Finbar. I, I have a tendency to think ahead without really considering the thing right in front of me. One step at a time. Let us find Thulden in. I don't We're know if well. we have anything else to ask uh, of you, Max. Just, um, sidebar, Virla, do you know how to locate object? Because I don't, and if that's what we're going to try and do with some sort of implication effect, we need a way to cast it. I do not have locate object, but I, but I and Emmy have detect magic, and perhaps the idea being that we can try and... Oh, if we you can could amplify Emmy, then she might be she might be able to do it. Amplification of Emmy. What, like if it were in the ship? <laughs> uh, Maybe. So, my thinking is if you want Emmy in the ship, you're going to have to do something very similar to what uh, yeah. Casimir did Casimir. in this house. Yeah, so no, that, would be, I, that would be a long a, process. But maybe yeah. you could hardwire her in. Yeah, so, like partitioning you know, so, a bit well, of the motive force I'm... generator to like output magical energy. What we're saying is that this is yeah. Overclock yeah. Part 2 is the title yeah. of this episode. Uh, this is very much Overclock Part 2. Yes. All right, yeah, alright, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> Overclocked again. Yeah. Please Electric don't clock break the plane shift tool. We need that to get out. <laughs> well, What's the worst that can happen? I see the weave. Get Been there, done that. Well. Danny, I trust you. You have certainly kept our ship relatively ship shape, so. Very well. In order to use the tuning fork to locate a portal directly to Thulin, you will need to ground it within the geometry of Mechanis. Very familiar with the magnetic obelisks. In no. passing, perhaps at one time I did know. Uh, actually, Fear that can go ahead and roll a history check. Sure. Thank I remember you obelisks. mentioned them in episode 7. I don't remember what for, though. 14. 14? Yeah, you know that they're what the Modrons use to, like... Yeah. They're like, um... They're like GPS markers. Right. Right? For the Modrons. He explains. 
the, monac the magnetic obelisks are uh, aligned to the specific geometry of Mechanus and in turn attuned to Primus himself. Each one appears as a glossy black stone, ten yes. feet high. They'll, you'll know them by their hum as you approach. I'm not sure how, but if you were able to connect the obelisk to the tuning fork, then should grant you the ability to follow the tuning fork to a location. I've never attempted it myself, but I've read study of it done. Hmm. Well, jury rigging two things that shouldn't work together, and so that they work together. That is right up our alley. <laughs> oh, so we're letting Danny access something fundamental to the workings of this entire dimension. I am yes. all for this plan. <laughs> I kind of well, got the gist deep. of it last time. It'll be fine. Uh, Luckily, there are none very close to here. <laughs> Luckily. Do you know where the closest one is? I assume it's in some sort of, I don't know, convenient coordinate. Indeed. Uh, he kind of goes through some paper. Um, it gives you a uh, bearing. You're looking for one, three, four, seven, zero, eight. Eight, six, seven, five. Two, yeah, three, five. That does. That's not convenient at all. Those are just numbers. I thought it would be something whole, like 100, 100, 100, or something like that. Well, you no, know, if we find another Modron, we can ask You actually help. know, I've, uh, I don't remember what it is, but you do know the coordinates of uh, Maxim's house, yeah. and you know that they are, are linked geographically so that you can, like, uh, there's, there's a set distance that follows. We can basically so triangulate just, from You them. can triangulate. It's the exact same way that you found where Maxim's house yeah, was. Yeah, no, I know uh, that's... From where you're... It's an yeah, I know that it's not easy. System. I know that it'll be easy to find. I personally just thought it was going to be like some clean number as opposed to <laughs> oh, just a, no. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Well, you think there's clean round numbers in Mechanus? <laughs> you well, in fairness, you did give us, you know, three whole numbers. It's not like we're going to 408.653 or something like that, you know. Yeah, well, each one's just a big grid, so it's a huge block. It's somewhere in there. <laughs> all right. One. Well, um are we all in agreement? I turn to the group. Yeah, let's do it. Yes. <laughs> this is going to be so fucking fun. <laughs> All right. So I should take it that uh, you're not interested in, uh, obtain in uh, me putting out feelers for someone who might be able to give us a more precise location? The feelers are appreciated, but I think we'll go off the hunch we have now. It's not even but a hunch. actually, we'll... the location oh. of the ship in the dimension, that's the hard part. We don't know where it is in... Correct. What? If if anyone's okay. like, if someone who's been to the second layer of Acheron has been like, yeah, there's like a weird prow of a ship sticking out of this one junk pile, thirty-seven miles in. Like, if if that's the kind of feeler we could get, that would be that would be really helpful to give us like an idea of what chunk to start looking in. Um, because whatever I spells you guys need, but it's quite in the opposite direction, unfortunately. Opposite direction. <laughs> what was the lead? Well, I've spoken to some of my colleagues. They informed me that there is a reputable client we might seek out. Uh, she is, however, located in Arborea, and she is not an expert on Acheron, but rather a seer, who we could perhaps glean information from should we visit her. Ooh. But such would be a large detour away. And indeed, some sort of task would have to be undertaken for her in order to... Gain her, uh, payment. I do not know how seers work, but anecdotally they tend to be very obfuscating in what they know. Indeed, this one's... What's, what would be a normal word for track record? <laughs> uh, this, um... Reputation? Home. Reputation, thank you. <laughs> this one's reputation is stellar, but uh, that is among seers, so. Excellently obfuscating. Had to answer three riddles before she told me anything. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> I do not want to lose the momentum we have now. I think we will politely decline. Alrighty. Oh, well, perhaps for another day. Oh, is that Plus okay, though? Like, it's not... It's not pressing, right? She doesn't. The so is She doesn't need anything. There is a whole network. Someone else shall attend to it if it is pressing. Oh, okay. 
at some point we'll have I to think act. everyone rolled to learn what she was and no one succeeded, correct? Yeah. When yeah. first met her? Yeah, sorry. No one understands. At some point, what. we'll have to ask you what your job is in a bit more detail. But for now, <laughs> let's go. To the obelisk. Only ask questions in which you would like to learn the answer. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's go. Thank she you, Max. Do you want to learn the answer? <laughs> is Fairla feeling okay? Eventually, eventually. <laughs> Good luck. Return soon. Your staff should be finished shortly. Ooh. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> the shrink is yes, hell. greatly in the pursuit of this <laughs> hobby. Well, I'm glad that that was helpful. Uh, I can cast that too, guys. So, All right, Good. let's go. Very well. Okay. Bye, Maxim. Departs. The doors close. Rearm with the arcane lock. You board the ship. Who is going to helm? Uh, with with enough, uh, you know, w- between Virla's sharp mind and the pretty good perception of Finbar, we're not going to worry about a navigation check again. Even though you are going to a new place, you have coordinates, so you're going to be able to navigate there. Uh, is there any preparations you guys would like to make? Because we are now closing in on, uh, in the time of like a short rest, you know, like a couple hours. There's not going to be another long rest before hopefully you enter Acheron. So oh, if there's oh. any preparations you want to be making in the meantime, uh, now would be a good time to get that done. Right. Okay. Yeah. Virla. Yes, Finbar. I think I have a spell for you. Oh. Well, I need to clarify. Um, there isn't, it's not a 100% guarantee that it'll take. But if you're game, I am. Okay. Well, you remember how you used to, uh, well, so you had that thing with their, that, that touch you did where you drained another person's life. Uh, I seen you yes, do it a couple touch. times. Yes, yes. Okay, I got something uh, probably a little more reliable for you. Oh. Uh-huh. Wither and Bloom. Should be Is that something also you're a wizard spell? It's a wizard spell? Should be something you're capable of doing. I am unfamiliar. <laughs> Although, given the titling, I can it's, intuit. Instead of your ability to touch a person to drain their life, you ne- merely need to visualize the area to which the life exists. Whether it be around you or anywhere else um, and all creatures in that area will have their life drained from them and then you can possibly heal um, well, it'd be good to have that in your back pocket well let us take Emmy for a test run then you do not need to cast it on me I should clarify and stress <laughs> um, I nope, think just Emmy seeing only it'll needs... work <laughs> yes uh, as Emmy said just seeing it will suffice okay um. Mm, see, it's gonna be tough casting it. Do it. The the spell doesn't actually have to go off, right? It just I just have to. Uh, you could just like, cast like point off the deck and cast it on. She just needs to. Okay. She needs to see the verbal somatic material components go on. Mm-hmm. And doesn't matter as long as the spell goes off. It doesn't matter whether it you know targets one person or, uh, or right you know zero or a thousand doesn't matter. Okay. Finbar kind of stretches. <sighs> puts his hand on his uh, star map as he recalls how the spell is cast. Um, the vine that usually uses for vine whip sort of wraps up on his hand around his middle finger. He closes his fist as an area um, sort of in the air sort of becomes dull and gray um, as if uh, the light has been sucked from it. And I cast uh, Wither and Bloom at the second level. All right, it's Emmy, second write level, that down. Write that down. DC is 12. Uh, go ahead right. and roll. Emmy has a plus 8 to her arcana, so you can go ahead and roll the d20 and add 8. You're okay. looking at a 12. Uh-huh. Let's do this. That was an 8, so 16. 16. Woo. You hear uh, Emmy in your head says, accessing Wither and Bloom. And there's kind of a moment where in front of your eyes, you can kind of see, like, the matrix code. First off, you're seeing the, the weave, uh just barely around Finbar's fingers and then where the effect happens already. But there's sort of like that matrix code where you can kind of like see the arcane inscription you need to write into your spellbook. Uh, And uh, yeah, so for the duration, until you copy it like a spell scroll, uh, the Emmy has remembered Wither Mm -hmm. and Bloom with the normal time and material components that you would copy any spell into your book. You may now add Wither and Bloom. 
Awesome. This DM rude. Yes. is the the uh, quirk of seeing the weave whenever magic is cast. Is that a recent thing? <laughs> uh, that's that's happened to you since uh, you were the, the combination of being mad from Zuktamoy and then the uh, the wish. It's this has sort of been like a burgeoning thing that you're starting to notice. You noticed it most with the plane shift. At, it was like the first time you really noticed it. Yeah, yeah. The plane shift is like a seventh level spell, right? But now you're starting to notice it, just like the fringes kind of framing and like other spells that are being cast. Take the warlock I mean, you level, that? you coward. <laughs> Emmy, did you see that? Sorry. Any anything uh, unusual about that spell being cast? Any I've never seen it before, but fabrics in reality being altered or Indeed, manipulated. it does alter the fabric of reality as all spells okay. do. <laughs> yes, very good. Emmy. We're gonna have fun. Yes. All right. <laughs> I'll go and copy the spell into my spell book. She's got her own eyes, so she doesn't see what you see. She sees what oh you goodness, see because okay. she's facing the same way as you. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. you know, um, it's not quite the same. Cool. All right. Um. <laughs> so I guess we could see I mean, if she's affected by time stop me, or not. <laughs> uh, good shit. Okay. <laughs> so you are you gonna copy? If someone else flies, then you can copy this into your book now if you'd like, or you can. Oh, just give me. Later. You said it was a second level spell. Yes. Give me four minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys, yeah. Uh, I think yeah. it's fifty gold per spell, right? So if you got a hundred gold pieces, then you oh. should be fine. Yeah, Pish if you posh. guys are futzing around, uh, you guys are. Uh, I'm probably the one flying, so it should be an issue. Sure. Yeah. New spell acquired. Copying it into your spell book without most of the pains that most wizards use. The you know the the arcane quill just like flying through quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. We Kiana at the helm. We approach where you know the obelisk is going to be. Uh, plans being made as you approach. I'll give you the layout is that it is somewhat sheltered, so there's a lot of gears here that kind of link in, so you can't get the ship right up against it. Also keeping in mind that the gears work such that they are planes of gravity, so you can walk across one gear and then go underneath, or if there are gears perpendicular, you can walk down one and step off onto the next one. So as long as you can get near a gear that's connected to the place you're going to, you can just walk there. It's not like a, you don't have to worry about falling anywhere. Uh, anyway, you can get the ship pry within within like 200 feet of where you're trying to go but the gears just get too close together um mm -hmm. and inside finbar with your keen per uh, passive perception you do indeed see that there is a black monolith fully 2001 style just a big fucking black monolith <laughs> <laughs> so no yeah. trees no shrubs no sunshine in nope. there but there's that there's that obelisk we're looking for Okay. I'm sorry, Finbar. <laughs> so what do well, we got to do with it? I turned to Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to yell, hello? <laughs> so, tick, it's a big obelisk. Tick, Have tick. we tried knocking? We could, no, we could just try tuning, like, clanking the tuning fork on the obelisk and see where that goes for a start. Is that how it works? <laughs> Well, like, usually we just go through gates, right? Yes, but it can also be used to, in this case, locate gates. Yeah. Yeah, you're kind of using it in a weird way that most of you, none of you had heard of before. But because of the specific, um, what's what I'm looking for? The specific uh, details of your scenario here of being on a single layer plane of mechanists and then trying to get to a second layer one and using the obelisk, which is no other worlds have a, a a gps system like this that you can tap into mm -hmm. there's like a weird uh sequence of events here that's letting you do this kind of special thing right and this isn't going to open the gate this is going to show us where the gate is going to show you where the take... gate is yeah because then we can take the ship with us then yeah. You, yeah it's gonna it's gonna the tuning fork is gonna be like when you connect the tuning fork to the gps the gps is gonna be like oh i know what that feels like that's over here basically good well, maybe we should just try just clanking it on the obelisk. Uh, do we want everyone to get off the ship? I feel like we don't want to leave the ship yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> mm, we need the ship to go. Oh, but I could stay with the ship if you would like. Give me a chance to play with the cat. 
I think maybe more than one of us should stay with the ship. I mean, if plug want, would be here. Just be me. It can just be me and Danny. It seems as though we're the two that are best suited for this task. Yeah, yeah I don't really know what I was going to do with the monolith anyway. <laughs> okay, let's do it. If we need you to punch anything, we know we'll, we'll go to you. Yeah, just shout. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, just like the last time. <laughs> Sweet. All just... right. You guys want to see what uh, what you're looking at? Yes. Uh, yes. Before... Uh, oh, oh, oh my, my God. Roll Why would you have thing. a? <laughs> uh, before the they. They head for the obelisk, though. Um, once again, I'm going to bless the two smartest people with an enhanced ability um, to okay. make them just a little bit smarter. This is a yeah. third level enhanced ability, hitting two people with, um, what is it? Fox is cunning. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so you have advantage on intelligence checks for the duration. Awesome. Thank you, Finbar. Intelligence of all kind. All right, so uh, the ship is gears. directly above, like I said, like maybe, uh, it's like 150, what, what did I say before? It was 150 or like 200 feet? I can't 200 remember. feet, we were 200 feet, feet away. So it's about 200 feet up, so that's only, you know, that's like 30 second walk for you guys. Yeah. Uh, and it's directly, you're right now directly above the obelisk. In fact, to you guys, the perspective is kind of that the obelisk and this whole thing are upside down, like an upside down basket, and the ship is underneath it, and you're going to have to walk up and in. But of course, the oh. gravity changes wherever you stand, mm -hmm. so when you get there, it's going to look like the ship is upside down, and you're standing right side like up. Like a Mario Galaxy level. So, yeah, so like the view a Mario that we Galaxy see right now, that is like us on the deck of the Paraspora looking up. Yes, yes and the on the map that you see, this is you guys looking up from the deck of the Paraspora, and this thing in the middle is the obelisk. If I Wild. jumped, which direction would I end up going? If you jump hard enough, you'll go straight down. <laughs> well, that would hurt a lot. We're not doing that unless we have to. I would assume it's only that two hundred. Uh, it's only twenty d six. Yeah. Uh, that's that's on. on average sixty damage. Okay. Uh. Yeah. I mean, Sorry, it would we're still hurt. That I can't imagine a reason you need to jump that far. Anyway. Yeah. Shall we just uh, So, what Hi. is going on? Danny and Virla are going to the obelisk. Sweet. Okay. You guys uh, walk up the. Are you gonna? Are you gonna like? You could. I guess you could let a rope down if you wanted to. But you, you walk up the. I guess you could walk up the mast and let a rope down if you wanted to. But what the you... um the the most straightforward way is just to walk from the get off the edge of the ship, walk down a gear. And then walk yeah. across onto a gear. That seems fun and whimsical. What do you say? Do you want to? You want to feel how Kiana feels? <laughs> yeah. I don't I think it's actually going to be all that accurate. How but... Kiana feels. <laughs> all right. Let's just take the long way. All right. all right. You guys walk down metal feet and booted feet upon metal gear, which is slowly actually rotating out from underneath you. So if you stood, st if you stood still, you just turn around in a circle. But huh. it's going kind of slow enough that just by walking, you're not getting turned around. People mover. Yeah, people mover style. It's uh, you come down over kind of the, you know, the ridges of it uh, and then step down onto the main, this big platform gear here on which the obelisk does. Uh, as you come within 100 feet of the obelisk, could uh, I get <laughs> uh, Virla to please make a strength saving throw? Oh, but I'm good. Strength? Oh, is it man. magnetic? <laughs> oh my god, oh, is god, it magnetic? Is it magnetic? Wait, they said it was magnetic! <laughs> oh, well, yeah, huh? Alright. <laughs> uh, strength? 17. Actually, can you make it a disadvantage? And Danny, what kind of oh, armor are you wearing? Fuck. Uh, I am wearing. I think it's leather. 15. Armor. I'm wearing studded leather, so however you want to rule uh -oh. that. Uh oh. Uh, I'm gonna rule that. Sorry, what'd you roll? Real? 15. I, I I actually didn't roll all that low. <laughs> you succeed. You begin to feel the magnetic pull and kind of like, you know, you, you move forward like a foot or two, but oh. you're okay. Uh, this is a persistent thing, though. You're gonna have to keep I up. I should have thought about this. Uh, oh, Danny, geez. I'm gonna... Technically, it says that uh, metal armor wears disadvantage, um, but I'm gonna count this as like you are magnetic because there's metal in it, but there's not that much, so you don't have disadvantage. Go ahead and roll straight strength saving throw for me. Oh, I'm gonna, it's can this be where I use my anti inspiration? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, this one Wait, you're, you're doing that? I want to get it out of the way, you know? Did you get okay. inspiration for purposely taking the L? <laughs> Just cancels no. out. <laughs> uh, but I'm hugely a... impressed. 
a natural 17 and a natural 18. My strength is plus cool. uh, one. So that's a 18. Hey. All right. Nice. Cool. You are uh, okay. You also feel the pull. You can feel the uh, tool <laughs> trying to be like pulled from the, the uh, your spellcasting focus, trying to be pulled from your belt. But you kind of put a hand down, put your boots down, and stay. Uh, what is uh, what, what's your passive perceptions, by the way? Uh, nine. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> nine. Uh, high int, yeah. low whiz, yeah. guys. Low we whiz. know this. Yeah. Come on. Jeez. I'm not oh, that low whiz. I'm a fourteen whiz. Uh, you, 22 passive. As this happens, Virla, you notice that there are predator style. You see surrounding the obelisk that oh, there no. are oh, no. kind of like, you see the slight shift of invisible yeah. creatures. Uh, I'm going to ask everyone to roll initiative, please. Oh, boy. As the ambush is triggered, you guys are not pulled to the obelisk. Uh, and what indeed, the hell? This is an open Virla, information. They are not given <gasps> to you. But they are hidden to Danny, so Danny's gonna have a hard time dealing with these guys. Oh, uh, no. But initiative is being rolled. Let me get Wait, an initiative. They're not hidden to me. Why not? Is it because, because you can see the weave? Oh. Uh, beats their <laughs> oh, pass, okay. their their stature. Gotcha. So, Some of us I like are my just better. unobservant. <sighs> I'm going to go ahead and even though hmm. Dan, so Danny can't see them, but uh, and I would say that Finbar and Kiana, you're just like too far away to perceive this until oh. the actual fight happens but it's clearly you can see them it's not a surprise round and uh indeed you're gonna be able to act it's mm -hmm. the ants oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah i don't know if you guys remember this but there was a whole thing but you've seen them before they're uh they're oh, yeah. uh, a big species of sapient bug that lives in the it because they're like ants they live in mechanisms because they're all lawful of course. What size? Now I know are how they? Maxim felt when he was shrunk inside the staff. <laughs> They're all going on initiative eleven. We've got Danny coming in at the top with an eighteen. We've got Finbar with a seventeen. We've got Kiana with a nine. That's a low roll. And I rolled a tasty a natty one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amazing. So uh, how this is going to work? I'm going to say is that. This is uh, for the people on the shit on the deck who can't really see what's going on. It's a surprise round. Surprise round means nothing for you, Kiana. So sorry, yeah. Finbar, you are surprised for this first round of combat. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny, you are not surprised, but they are hidden to you. So while you know there's a combat happening, presumably because Virla says something, he detects them before uh, anything bad is going to happen. You cannot see them currently, so you can't target them with spells unless one appears, and uh, they're going to have advantage to hit you since they are hidden to you. Gotcha. All square. All right. Formian Gladiator's turn. Range. Oh, he's got a range thing. Sweet. Yeah, so there's this big silver is the gear that you can walk on, and then there's a big fall to another gear down there. He's oh, flying okay, because gotcha. he has wings. Oh, okay, gotcha. What size would you say these uh, flying creatures are? They are oh, medium. No. Hmm. They are medium. Sweet. So he is going to make... He has... He can make a lot of attacks, actually. 45, 50, 55, 60, he can get to Virla! Uh, no! Oh, wait, uh, can they fortunately, fly? Uh, fortunately, he is not. Yep, they fly now. Fortunately, he is oh. not given to you, Virla, so these attacks will not be made at advantage. Very fortunately. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's going to make two uh, Githka He's attacks. He's to believe. Straight. Uh, that's an 18 and a 22 to hit. Okay. For my reaction, I'm gonna cast shield, okay. which, okay. Uh, uh, so one doesn't hit, but the 22 does. Okay, so just one attack finds purchase. He comes in with mm -hmm. this, uh, it's like, it looks like it's made of bone or carapace, kind of like oh. double-bladed weapon. 16 points of slashing damage. Oh, all right. And then he's Howdy. going to make Oh, as he flies, sorry, as he flies in, he will make a ranged attack with the Chachka. He would, forgive me, this guy knows how to fight because he's a gladiator. He knows to throw the weapon and then get in close because that's how combat works. Uh, sure, he will sure. throw the weapon first at Danny. So what happens is he comes in, throws this, like, discus with teeth on it at Danny <laughs> at advantage because Ooh, he is hidden. That is going to be 
a 19 to hit Danny. I will use my reaction to cast shield to bring my AC up to 20. Okay, so the advantage attack, you know, you see barely the, uh, <laughs> like, the shimmer of the blade as it comes at you, and then you cast shield, bounces off. He materializes, takes two attacks at Virla. Another glance, uh, glances off an arcane shield as you basically simultaneously both cast the same spell. Uh, and oh, then so cool. the second one cuts through, glances Virla. And that will end his turn. Uh, Danny's turn. Danny, could I please get you to make a uh, strength saving throw yes. to resist being pulled? Uh, that is a 17. Okay, you are not pulled. What would you like to do? Nice. Uh, I am going to... Yeah, you don't want to be pulled 10 feet. There's a big there's a big hole there. <laughs> yes, there is. But you know what's less than 150 feet away from me is the middle of that obelisk. Uh <sighs> So what mm -hmm. I think Danny's going to do is a 20-foot radius fireball centered on the point of the uh, obelisk, which gets all the dudes, I think, that are yes. there. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's going to get all the dudes. You know how sometimes if you, like, if, like, the hot air gets near the thermostat and the, te the house is like, oh, no, it's way too hot. I better blast the AC. <laughs> Yeah. This is going to be the karmic knockback. You accidentally turn the temperature down on the universe by fireballing <laughs> one of these magnetic obelisks. Danny, the first time ever casting fireball innately, not from your tattoo, yeah, what does this look like? Yeah, which means I get like? the extra d6 fire damage because it's an artificer spell from uh, the Baronium Fluctuator. You, you, you oh, do oh. against one of the creatures. So uh, that's the easy. way that... It, when it says it says one damage roll, and technically rules is written in D&D, &D, you're supposed to roll damage for the spell separately for each creature. Mm. That's what it means. We don't do that, because that would take forever. Forever. Uh, but it means that you're going to get to add that D6 to one creature. So uh, there is the mystic, and then four soldiers. So... We go mystic yeah, on you this can target one. Them. Okay. The Very, okay, so I'm going to roll the mystic uh, saving throw first. This is dexterity save. Uh, that's a 10. So it's going to fail. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's DC 17 dex for all of them. I'm going to roll the D6 addition, the additional D6 for the mystic first and then put it aside and then I'll roll the total other ones because that's all. Cool. Let me figure out who else fails. So uh, soldier one fails, soldier two fails, soldier three, natural one, soldier four <laughs> just fails. So that's a big hey. fail on all of them. So they are all taking nice. uh, the full 8D6 fire damage and then the mystic's taking yes, the extra they are. 9D6. I mean, it's mechanist, so it's probably halved, but let's see what we got. Uh, oh, it's oh. actually, you don't bother rolling. Oh, I screwed up by rolling. Uh, uh, Virla will do the math correctly. Uh, what is the average roll for all of those dice? Because this is mechanist, and indeed, all of the math is balanced out. Eight what are the dice? It's 8D6. 8 times 3.5. So it's, uh, sorry. Uh, first of all, Virla, go ahead and mm -hmm. change that attack that hit you. Dealt 13 points of slashing damage. 13, you said? 13, yes. Second, okay, cool. uh, what is the baseline uh, fireball we said? 8d6, uh, 28, right? 28. That's 28, yeah. 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 All right, so they each take 28 points of fire damage and are immediately reduced to five hit points. Fun. Uh, and the one mystic takes an extra three points of fire damage. Cool, so she's going to take 31. <clears throat> you see this blast, uh, somehow controlled yet you know, chaotic coming from Tanny just centers on the obelisk and expands outwards. Uh, carapace fried. You see like smoke coming up. They start to like shriek. Um, they're actually telepathic beings. So you can kind of hear like there's, there is mouth noises coming out, but also you can kind of hear shrieks in your head from the pain of what just happened. That's your action. Do you have any bonus action? Uh, the cannon's not out, so I and plug is on the ship, not as a non-combatant. So Danny does not. Uh, am I within melee range of the funky gladiator guy, or could I move uh, without incurring an opportunity? You could attack? move within. You could easily move within range. He's five feet away from you. Oh, you could I get would away. like to move There's away. No, no attack of opportunity. <laughs> I'd like yeah, to yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you you want to you want to go slap him? Yeah, go for it. No, uh, yeah, you can totally get away. He's actually he's, he's, he's far enough away. All right, I'll just run down the side of the gear at like thirty gear thirty feet. Uh, Run, run away. Just a little bit to put some distance on. Um, uh, and Danny will, like, <laughs> I imagine the way she gets the fireball is she just, like, flicked her goggles down, reached out with the fluctuator, barely even looking, cast it, heard the screams, and then just started, like, hustling backwards away from the guy with the spear. 
You got this, right, Vela? The the fluctuator like magnetically gets pulled from your couch. <laughs> and you just grab it, throw out a, a fireball, and then keep moving. Yeah. Uh, Finbar, apologies, it's just a surprise. Um, we come to the Formian soldiers. Uh, they got a fly speed of sixty, and they've got no range. So I guess they are just going to rush you. So they're not going to be able to get into range. So what's going to happen is. Uh, three of them are going to dash up into melee, and one of them is going to get attacks on you, Danny. Okay. So three of them spend their action dashing, and then one is going to make uh, a bite and a claw attack. Good. Take your best so shot. S- start Beach. with the bite. Danny, no. <laughs> uh, t- nine to hit. That'll miss. And the claw. Uh, even worse. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So the rest of them fly into... Uh, melee at this point. Hmm. Big insectile, uh, you know, so you've seen Ankegs before, right? Uh, smaller than that, <laughs> you've also seen Thrykreen before, larger than that, and Thrykreen don't have wings. These guys are, uh, imagine insect centaurs, right? They're kind of, they've got an upper body that's insectoid with arms, but they also have the abdomen and thorax that kind of, uh, I should say the abdomen is like the upper body, and then the thorax that goes up behind them with the insect legs so they've got you know there's there's a lot going on here uh and then of course they have wings on their back that they're able to fly as well so they come in and out it is the mystic's turn yeah so the the mystic is pissed at that big spell you just cast at it so it's gonna fly (laughs) 20 20, 30 35 40 45 50 55 60 it's gonna see if we're in range if not just gonna shoot off some attacks you want to be outside 30 feet, you son of a bitch. 40 feet <laughs> away, Danny. Womp cool. Womp. So instead of it will make four psychic bolt attacks. Ooh. Hmm. Gonna do two at Danny, two at Mirla. So two at Danny. One is a 14, but the other is a 24. <laughs> you take six points of psychic damage from the one that hits. Alrighty. Uh, Virla actually rolled very poorly on both of these. Um, Hell yeah. A 15 and a... Sorry, a, a 14 and a 15. Both fail. Okay. Shield's doing a lot of work. <laughs> That's what it's for. That will end the Mystic's turn, which brings us to Kiana. You are 200 feet above, and you see this alert. Normally, under cir- normal circumstances, you'd have a hard time getting into... Uh, A normal person would have a hard time realizing what's going on, but your finely attuned battle senses, you can almost feel the psionic pull your head tilted up as you notice the ambush lying in wait. What would you like to do? Drop an anvil. I think what happens is... Find some TNT. (laughs) Go for Looney Tunes. I think what happens is I I hear the fireball go off, and I'm like, Danny's in trouble. (laughs) Um, So I'm going to hop over. someone's in trouble because of Danny. (laughs) Oh yes, yeah. somebody's in trouble, and Danny's involved. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna hop over the edge of the uh, the the ship and start running down the gear. Two hundred feet, you say? Yep, thereabouts. That's What's your speed? Okay. Uh, well, my movement will be forty-five feet. Using my action to dash will take me. No, oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a there's a where the fuck is it? Come here, you step of the wind. Where are you? What do you do? <laughs> Uh, gives you another dash, so you could move another 45 feet. You could get 135 feet this round. Ah, but I, okay, all right. But my jump distance would be doubled. Yeah, but you can only move as far as your speed with a jump, so you could be but, bounding those. You could do really big jumps along the way and only But the move gravity flips feet. down there, right? I couldn't jump the last yeah, oh. 65 feet? Oh, you want to do that? Yeah, we oh can do that. God, man. <laughs> you want to fall yes, 65? you're not wrong. It's only six, it's only, uh... Uh, is the 66. fall damage also averaged? Um, I think it's weapon damage. So okay, but it's it's sixty six. It's going to be somewhere close to the mid, to the median, you know. Actually, sixty six max is still less than forty, which is the limit Correct. that I reduce it by. With oh wait, hold on, slow fall. Oh no, snow falls my reaction, not my bonus action. So mm-hmm. I can do yeah, all of that. Go. All right, so yeah, you... bonus action, step of the wind. Use my movement to run. Use my. Uh, action to dash, and then my bonus action, step of the wind, to uh, I guess run and then jump the last 65 feet. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick you right here. This is 
uh, that spot is to picture you are, um, uh, that, like, you're looking down. This is where you are mm -hmm. in, you know, the vertical direction. Uh, your jump distance horizontal is, or no, it'd be, it'd be vertical jump distance because you're jumping up and off, uh, but it's equal to your strength score, which is 18, My strength, 19? 19 because but of the gauntlet. But it's doubled, so let's just say 40, a nice round number. Place Kiana on the silver gear within anywhere within 40 feet of the position you're at now. When she lands, so, does it sure. set up like a superhero landing style shockwave that doesn't need to <laughs> I would love uh, to do that. Uh, it does but I think not. I wanna... It's quite the opposite because she's slow falling. She, she doesn't take any damage. If you want, yeah. you can try to land on one of the creatures and deal damage <laughs> to them. But no, that's a there's a mechanic for it. But if you, it, either way, you're taking some damage. And if they succeed on their deck save, you're taking all of it. You're not passing any on to them. And I can't slow fall that away because I'd be no, trying to. No, if you slow fall, you're taking no damage. So you can land on it with slow fall, but neither of you would take damage. Neither right? of us would take damage. No, I think I'm so. just going to land between uh, where Virla and Danny are. So like here-ish. Okay, go ahead and move just, yourself. Boom. I, I Fantastic. did. Fantastic. Uh, action, bonus action, mark off the key for the step of the win. Oh, no, yes. we don't do that. Uh, we don't step do of the that. win for free. Uh, we don't do that here. We don't do that here. Uh, mm -mm, runs down. And runs my reaction... Here. Flips off so, reaction. Cat, cat's grace lands on the ground. Slow fall, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> slow fall takes no damage. Great. And uh, that's your whole turn. That's my entire turn. I can't do anything else and I have no reaction. So hopefully they don't shoot anything at me. It's <laughs> a good point. Uh, amazing. Virla, you are... Kiana has no metal, I don't think, on her at all, right? It depends on what the Fomorian gauntlets are made of. Uh, the picture oh, is metal. Good question. But the they are a metal, Finbar thing. It's it's like I think I think they're more. St I imagine them as being more stone like. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna call it on this one and just say Kiana has no metal. This benefits of being armor. You don't have armor, so no metal. <laughs> uh, Virla, can I get you to make a strength saving throw at the start of your turn? And gold is it magnetic? Yes, <laughs> Tee hee hee. Uh, with disadvantage because you are made of metal. <laughs> yeah. That's a ten and a seven. Oh, Eight. buddy. <laughs> Eight. Uh, you move 10 feet. Oh no. Does he ah, take the gladiator boom. with him? <laughs> nope, he just pushes right past the gladiator. Uh, oh. I believe falling happens at the start of your turn. So at the start of your okay. turn next time, you're gonna plummet down to the uh, gear that's beneath you. Unless oh. you can get back. Up. How much How much of a fall is it? Uh, it's about two feet. Cool, all right. Wait, he's gonna fall down towards the ship? No. He's gonna fall. No, no down oh. towards the gear that's towards down the here. farther away oh, gear. Right. Okay. But it's, I will say, if you want to try and, there's plenty of crazy things you could try to do. If you do want to try to just grab on, it's not too hard because you're you're within five feet of the edge still, and the gravity does is kind of helping you. But he's not yeah. just gonna yeah. fall towards the obelisk, is he? <laughs> uh, no, because it's not central towards the center of the gear. It's like a plane. So now he's gonna but plummet down towards the next gear. Oh I'm just, boy. I'm, I'm just gonna do the safe thing and dimension door to the obelisk. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Amazing. Good. <laughs> okay. You and you don't have to worry about being magnetically pulled because uh, you're already there. You're right there. <laughs> yeah. Just so don't get those stuck spokes, to it. <laughs> those are all spokes you can stand on. You indeed. You cool. Pff, vanish. Appear right there. All right. That's uh, my and action. No attacks of opportunity because uh, yeah. you were force movement. Yeah. Uh, for my bonus action, getting Bing out. Uh, Bing, cool. Bing, Bing. Bing is not beholden to gravity, so I'm just gonna put him here. <laughs> uh, Bing's Bing can, not Bing can indeed fly. He yeah. can fly. <gasps> yeah, yeah I mean, it's just now. acting him, you know, rolling every time. <laughs> Amazing. Does that end your turn? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> All right. The I imagine it can only gladiator say Bing, you know? is going to roll up to Kiana. <laughs> oh. A worthy Hello, combatant sir. has entered the arena. I just he, got here. First, he's going to throw the chopka at you. Okay, I don't have my reaction, so I can't catch it. Uh, oh 14 God. to hit. For, uh, 14 to hit will miss. Okay, now he's going to take two uh, boomerang past you, uh, comes back, and he's going to take two attacks with this double-bladed spear thing that he's got. Here, bro. Uh, dirty 20 to hit. All right, that one hits. Okay, you take 13 points of slashing damage. Huh. And that will end his turn. 
turn. Danny, can I get you to make a strength saving throw? Yeah. Uh, as your tool, your multi-tool is being pulled from your hand now that it's out of your pouch. Uh, that's a 17. 17 succeeds. You do not lose your grip on it. What would you like to do? A lot of them are brought down to 5 HP, so I think what actually I'm going to do, because the average of 2d6 is... 7. Because it's 3.5 plus 3.5, 7. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to cast Scorching Ray, and I recognize that it will be at disadvantage on these first two dudes next to me, but one beam is going to... The first beam, uh, I'd like to go to the Mystic, and that's the one I'm going to add the bonus d6 <laughs> the extra d6 d or the extra d8 okay. sorry it's artificer thing um oh there you go yeah and then the second two will go to the two dudes next to me uh which i recognize i think all of these will be disadvantaged because of the melee but i'm okay with that correct go ahead and roll all of them at disadvantage first one so tell me who are you rolling at first first one at the mystic cool that is da, 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 da. uh that is a nine plus nine is 18 to hit that will hit, so you go ahead and deal seven points of fire damage. Uh, that one has the extra D8, so... Oh, add. minus four. So 11 points of fire damage. Mm -hmm. All right. Next one is at four and number one. Disadvantage. If you hit him, you kill him. Another 18. Hmm. That hits. This die keeps rolling this nines. Dude, <laughs> this dude is smoked. The last one, four and two on the other side of you. Uh, 17. 17 will hit at 7 points of fire damage. The dude is smoked. You see, the Mystic is still fine, pretty much, but you see these two soldiers just almost like a magic... Danny's accuracy is so good, it's like she's casting magic missile, even though technically she's got a roll to hit. Uh, heads fly off, scorch marks blast off of Carapace. And does that end your turn? I will use my movement to continue running away. <laughs> okay, yeah, go for it. Just another 30 feet. Uh, Danny is like very matter of fact in this fight. I think her attention is still mostly at the obelisk, so I'm just gonna continue moving <laughs> kind of towards it while smoking as many of these dudes as I can. And that'll be Danny's okay. turn. Finbar, far away, what would you like to do? Oh god. Um <laughs> Jump. Uh, jump. Uh, jump. Uh, jump. 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 Come on. Not man. jump that high. I cannot jump that high. <laughs> um, well, you, you don't I'm have to jump two hundred feet, you only have to jump high enough to get out of the ship's gravity and fall into the next gravity. Oh my god. Then you just need to survive 200 feet of falling damage. It's only I, 20 d6. It's, I can survive the fall, no problem. Uh, I just can't jump that high. Um, <laughs> how tall is the mast again? Can I climb uh, It's that? pretty tall. Yeah, actually, you probably yeah. can. Hold on. Okay, actually, cool. there's, rules for, there's rules for Spelljammer Gravity uh, that uh, I'm going to go ahead and... <laughs> Wait, being in the crow's nest might mean you just float away? <laughs> we got to get a seatbelt up there. I think it's big. I think the... Like Odysseus I just and the Sirens, Keanu just... we must tie Finbar to the mast <laughs> so that he does not throw... Hey, I jumped out, I jumped out of the ship and then ran plane. most of the way. I didn't Superman jump. Ah, that's... You might as well have. <laughs> Huh. Finbar's just My like, people uh, need me. <laughs> okay, all right. How, how do I get over there? All right. Can you turn into an animal with a fly speed yet, or is that not no, okay? No, not okay. yet. Great. Not yet. Oh, they really want to keep that one in the back pocket. No, yeah, you'd have to jump pretty high. Yeah, you want to try and climb? If I can get to the top of the mast, then maybe I can make that jump. Um, uh, mast would be, how tall is a, how tall is a sailing mast? Let's look it up. 200 feet. <laughs> it needs to be at least 80. She's joking. Oh, it's not. I, <laughs> Noir, I thank fully you believed for you. immediately it's not 20 stories me, high. despite every other clue you've ever received in your life saying that there's no way I know how tall a mast is supposed <laughs> let's, to be. Let's go ahead and I call it I was imagining, let's go I was imagining call it like, 50. while he's drawing. 50? 50. Okay. And I'm yeah. not good with measurements. I don't know if you can even climb that fast. I can misty step up 30 feet. Oh, yeah, yeah, you could. Um, then I will use my movement to sort of like climb uh, additional 15. I don't have a climb speed, um, mm -hmm. but at this point I am, what, uh, 45 feet up yeah. off of the ground. It's good You're enough. just going to throw yourself? And I'm going to pull out a longbow. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Mm, I see where this is going. Oh, Snipe! Right. Let's see if I can hit these shots. Um, snipe, snipe, what's the snipe. range on the so, longbow? It's like 600 or something, right? Yeah, 600 longbow, is yeah, long range. It's yeah. long range. <laughs> um, I'm going to reach into um, uh, the, the quiver, 
pull out an arrow, knock it, then I'll reach again into uh, the the bush, pull out a fairy, put it on the tip, I'm like, all right, <laughs> give it a kiss. <laughs> um, and I'm going to uh, oh, aim right, for... I'm good, arrow guy, let's go. <laughs> I'm going to aim for um, one of the uh, just the regular soldiers. Um, cool. At disadvantage. Go for it. Here we go. Five, 19. <laughs> uh, that'll hit. And your average damage is? Um, it's a D8 and a D6. So it's about seven yeah. total. Uh, that's more than they have. Uh, you hear, you, yeah, average damage. You let go of the arrow, you hear, Wahee! <laughs> <laughs> From the fairy. Just like collapse my throat doing that. <laughs> uh, arrow trailing like sparkles uh, shoots straight into the head of this Forbian, <laughs> comes out the jaw, uh, uh. and uh, a goo covered fairy uh, lets wow. go of the head of the, the shaft and goes, <laughs> and she throws its arms in the air. Uh, the formula just collapses to the ground. Good job. Do you have another attack? Nope. That is it. <laughs> That's all right. That's all you need. Well, there's one soldier left, and unfortunately they are like ants, so they're going to fight to the death. It's going to roll yeah. up, and it's going to flank Makes Kiana sense. and take two attacks. Huh. Uh, advantage from flanking. No. First the bite. Uh, that is a dirty 20 to hit. That'll hit. You take four points of piercing damage. Can I get you to make a constitution saving throw? Oh, no. Uh, yes. Uh, hold on. Mark down the damage first. 15? 15 succeeds. You are not poisoned. Good. Uh, oh, great. It'll make its claw attack an advantage now. Uh, that is an 18 to hit you. 18 is my AC. Okay, so that'll hit. You take six points of slashing damage. Ah. Uh, this thing comes in. It has no weapons, just... <laughs> Uh, swiping wildly at you. Ouch, 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 ouch. That brings us to the Mystic's turn. The Mystic is going to buzz closer to Danny. <laughs> In fact, actually, it's oh, probably going to buzz all the way up. Cause, uh, oh, how it's smart got a vendetta, thank goodness. That's okay, how it's smart. already taken a lot of damage. Intelligence plus one. Uh, yeah, it is going to roll up all the way to you, and as it gets close, it is going to extend a hand. It's got 60 mm. feet of fly, it's plenty close enough. Uh, it's going to use Drain Vitality. Can I get you to make a Constitution saving throw, please? Yeah. It doesn't know you're good. Uh, it's not smart enough to know you're good at these, but it's certainly going to. You're the biggest problem so far. So That's a spell, <laughs> right? I'd like to cast Counter Spell if so. Uh, drain Ooh. Vitality is an ability. is not a spell. Aww. Shit. Uh, that is Sorry, fam. a dirty 20. Right. That'll succeed. Uh, half as much damage. So instead of 32, you take 16 points of necrotic damage. <gasps> okay. I'm and okay. the Thrycreen heals for 16. That's, that's... All right. That will end its turn, though. Kiana, you are flanked by uh, this forming which came in. You felt the claws should have paralyzed you, but uh, you've been you've been you've been eating your weenies. You've been taking good care of your body, pushed <laughs> off, and nice. now you find yourself flanked on either side by this gladiator, this big imposing one with all these weapons, and this foot soldier. What would you I like to do? I've so many things with poison. <laughs> at this point, I've got to be at least a little bit immune. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's a monk. There's a monk ability that gets you immune to it. You just got to get to level 13 or something. I'll get there. All right. First things first. Uh, where's the friggin'? Uh, Excuse me. It's a bonus. Yes, it's a bonus action to summon the arms of the astral self. So yes. let's do that. And a dex save um, from bo both of it's them. It's a dex save, a uh, DC 17 from both of them. Uh, pfft. all right. Foot soldier is gonna fail. I'm pretty sure that's gonna kill him. What's the average damage on the on the arms? 2d6, seven. Seven. Boom. Yeah. Your just the wave of energy uh, crushes the carapace of this already weakened bug, uh, and then the gladiator rolls a. Ooh, he might be okay. Dex plus four. He rolls a 16. What, was it a 17? DC 17. Ah, Oh, fuck me. shame. <laughs> he takes seven points of damage. Yes. So this uh, is this... the first damage he's taken. Mm -hmm. And as you see, you hit him. There's kind of like a, he starts to like, kind of like his head kind of buzzes. And uh, this he gets like a little bit jacked up um, just from the, like taking the first hit. What would you like to huh. do? I don't like that. Mm -mm. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot about this I don't like. Uh, well, let's see. That was my bonus action. I cannot also enter a rage, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I will 
I'll take the attack action on this guy. May as well, right? Yeah, yeah okay, well. so first attack, plus nine to hit. How about a 13? Uh, I'm gonna miss. Shame, second attack. Don't forget you can ha! add key points to increase your attack, but it's only by two, uh, one, two, one key point gets you plus two to hit. Yeah. So no, yeah, it's you don't fine. know what the uh, AC is yet. Yeah, well for that second attack, how about a 28? Yeah, that'll do it. Ah, are you sure? What's the average okay. damage? Uh, it's a D6 plus five force damage, so that averages out to eight. Eight, correct, all right, boom. Yeah, you see he takes the hit on the chitinous jaw, uh, you know, right where the mandibles are, and uh, yeah, that fervor, if this thing could foam at the mouth, it would. It's, do we have a freaking barbarian? That's fun. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, that was my, my action, my bonus action. Uh, and that's all I got for now. So I guess I will end my turn and wait for it to punch me again. Fantastic. Virla, uh, you're up against the obelisk, so you don't have to make a strength save. You are already there. What would you like to do? <laughs> Good. All right. Um, first of all, I just want to double check that I'm within 90 feet. Yeah, yes, easily. And I will oh. cast Storm Sphere. There it is. Ah, uh, now I'll do that next time. <laughs> oh, fuck. 20 foot radius sphere. I will center it uh, there, like hereabouts, so that it, 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 it'll it get the mystic in the radius, but um, miss Danny. Thanks. This is a terrible. This is, this is not even. This is nothing. What, it, what am I drawing? Um, uh, I'll deal with that later. Uh, uh, each creature in the sphere, when it appears there, uh, or that ends its turn there must succeed on such a strength saving throw or take 2d6 bludgeoning damage which averages out to uh, 7 I yep. think correct until uh, the spell ends you can use a bonus action on each of your turns to cause a bolt of lightning to leap from the center of the sphere towards okay so first strength save when it appears yes. which is right now yes 8 oh yeah fails <laughs> so that's 7 points of bludgeon damage as the storm sphere just begins, you see just uh, <laughs> whipping up winds just begins to howl around and lightning <laughs> cracks mm -hmm. through here. Uh, Danny, you're like, your hair is blown off to one side and you're nearly taken off your feet, but you're not quite in the area of effect of the storm, <laughs> which I will go ahead and draw. And then I assume you're going to do a uh, do a thing? Oh, you know it. Uh, 20 foot radius? This is 20 foot radius. But oh, thank yes, you. I was just um, trying it. Uh, yep, uh, I will make an attack roll at the uh, guardian, not guardian, gl the gladiator. Gladiator? Yes. All right, okay, cool. Uh, Go ahead and roll an attack. It's somewhere between 13 and 28. Uh, mm, 20, dirty 20. Dirty 20 will hit. What's the damage on the lightning? Uh, three time, 3.5 times 4, uh, 14. 14. Yeah. Sweet. 14 it's easier to just take it in units of 2d6. Yeah, you see just the lightning goes off and strikes this dude who was totally unassuming. <laughs> Fantastic. Does that end your turn? Da, da, da. Does that end your turn? <laughs> yes. All right, we're I'm not moving that storm sphere in the meantime. I, I can't get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got you. Gladiator's turn. The gladiator is going to make, uh, now that it is uh, missing hit points, is going to make two Githka attacks at advantage against Kiana. Hmm? Mm. Yep. It makes attacks at advantage if it's missing any hit points. Uh, that's a 21 to hit. Well, that'll hit. 13 points of slashing damage. <laughs> that's a natural 20 to hit. Ah! Okay. 26 well, that's points bad. of. Uh, no, sorry. Hold on, because I you can't just double the average because you have to take out the. Hold on. 22 points of slashing damage. <laughs> How you doing? Okay. How are we doing? Still up. <laughs> All right. Still up? Single digits, but I'm still up. <laughs> She's resilient. Oh, man. And then he is going to make uh, a straight attack against Danny because he has disadvantage, but also he has advantage because he's below maximum hit points, so he's going to roll straight against Danny with the chop. Oh, with the, uh, oh wait, the hold on. Hit. I'm so sorry. Oh, Telekinetic yeah. reprisal. I can use my reaction. Uh, Please, go ahead. So, yeah, uh, the creature makes a strength saving so throw DC 17. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that saving throw. Uh, he's definitely gonna fail. Good. Uh, then he takes 2d8 force damage, which is, I assume, nine. Uh, yep. We're averaging that, right? Yep. I mean, it's not a weapon attack, but... Uh, uh, and yeah. is And is pushed up to 10 feet away from me. Uh, 
Okay. So, back you go. <laughs> cool. So you he hits with the crit, and boom! Uh, you see Subi's ah. like arms move without your puppeteering and throw it backwards. He skids, uh, and then he's gonna he's gonna fly back into melee because ah. it's his turn. Uh, oh, and then bitch. as he's going, he's gonna throw the uh, actually. When you push him back, he doesn't have an uh, attack of opportunity, and oh, I think he's still outside of his 30-foot range, though, to hit Danny, so it's still going to be... Yeah. <laughs> he can still hit her, but it's still straight. Uh, but he did roll a natural 16 plus 7, so a 23 to hit Danny. Yeah, that'll hit. Seven points of slashing damage to Danny. Okay, I'm still up. And that brings us to Danny. <laughs> Danny, you are holding... You are holding the... Uh, what do you call it? Your fluctuator. Uh, fluctuator. fluctuator. Your spellcasting focus. Can you please uh, roll a uh, strength saving throw? Please don't pull me into a storm sphere. <laughs> uh, it's an 18. <laughs> okay. Oh. Damn, Danny's rolling great strength saves. Damn, the DC's Danny. not low either. You've just rolled really well. Danny is strong and also, uh, you know, just strong. I only have a plus one to strength. <laughs> I don't know either. Um, okay. The two guys left. How is the Mystic looking? Mystic is looking... Uh, was pretty rough, but that heal brought back up to a decent spot. <laughs> but it drained your vitality. Danny is going to do another Scorching Ray and aim all three at the Mystic. And all of them are at disadvantage because okay. I'm in melee range, but I, I'm okay with that. Correct. First one is a nine to this, uh, 16 to hit. That'll hit. So 11 points of fire damage. Sweet. That's number one. Is a 19 to hit. That'll hit, so that's seven. And the last one is another 19 to hit. Another points of, another seven points of fire damage. Yeah, take a good chunk out. This thing's <laughs> back down to kind of where it was before. A little bit less than where it was before it did that drain vitality and uh, you know, drained you of your health, essentially. Cool. Does any bonus action from you, or you're all set? I'm not going to take a bonus action, but I am going to risk the opportunity attack and use my movement to leave the okay. area of this creature. Uh, this guy does have a melee attack, but is not super strong, so we're going to go ahead and just roll the straight Gifka attack. Um, okay, plus four to hit. Uh, just a 14, so misses. Misses, yeah. And that will be my turn. <laughs> I will Fantastic. Scoot on you back. leave this thing behind in the storm sphere, uh, your boots uh, on the metal. You feel like your armor being pulled to the side as you're running away. Finbar, what would you like to do? Oof, I, I am way too far away. Oh, man. Okay. Um, It's just these two guys left? Yep, the mystic who is... Uh, yeah, lower, and then the gladiator who's pretty beefy. And Kiana's not doing too well. Kiana okay. has six hit points. I'm going to slide down the mast, um, and I will... <sighs> it's it's going to be I... a lot of movement to get close if you're going back down the mast. Well, I, I can't jump. If the mast is only 50 feet, right? I need to get... Mm -hmm. An additional fifty? No, no. Feet. Once you start, uh, what, once you kind of break away, the bigger object is going to take over the gravity. So I'd say okay. with your jump from the mast, you'd be far enough to get into the gravity well of the gears. Okay. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, yes. Get yes, the yes, rest of the yes. way, top of the mast, um, and I will jump. All um, right. I'm gonna roll fifteen d six. Oh, oh man. man! You're jumping all Wait, no. the way. Finbar, in. Right? Finbar you, you've got to you place yourself wherever you want to on the gears as you fall. Okay. Is it not averaged or? Uh, oh no! I guess you're right. It would be. I, I I had said before, but I've been treating all damage, including not attack, not weapon, but like the uh, area of effect. So we'll go ahead and do it. Do it average. So that's uh, three point five times fifteen. So that's 52 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh -huh. oh. okay. And Finbar just lands like a fucking 
Cool. That's the your super Finbar air landing right there. The shockwave when he lands. Boom. Finbar definitely makes the shockwave. Wait, Finbar, do you want to try and land on one of these guys? I'm going to yes, land on the gladiator yes, if I yes, can. Yes, yes, okay, yes, shit. Yes, yeah, hold on. God. Wait, there's rules for I mean, if you're going to take the damage anyway. Yeah, True. yeah, you yeah, you are. So the creature has to make a dexterity saving throw. I'm going to look up the DC, and then you each take half if he fails as you land on him. Can he have disadvantage because he's really near me and we're fighting? <laughs> no. Fine. <laughs> Fine, DM. Sorry, yeah. I get a little snippy when I'm at six hit points. <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy. Okay, he's got to make a DC 50. I'm going to roll this in front of the group because this is really good. He's got a plus Dude, four, okay. so he's got a 50-50 chance on this one. Roll Just 1 like Mechanus intended. Plus four. Here we go. Dexterity saving throw. 14. Ooh. He fails. He fails. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> so oh go God. ahead and take, what did I say the damage was? 52. 52. 52. So go ahead and take 26, and this dude takes 26. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Dang. Finbar, describe this incredibly epic moment. Hey, Finbar. Uh, hey, Kiana. You're a little beat up there. Like, oh. I'm on somebody. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <I> kinda... <laughs> Slides off. Uh, this thing begins to like thrash out with all its arms. <laughs> um. <laughs> all right, cool. You got an action and a bonus action. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bonus action. I will activate the stars. Um, Ooh. as I sort of slide off of this guy, stars start twinkling all over around me. I activate uh, the chalice. Um, and uh, I have enough movement. I'm going to tap. Kiana, um, sure, and I yeah. will hit her with my highest heal. Ooh. Uh, Gonna which, hit her with your high heels? Yeah. <laughs> Extra um, kicks damage. Still let out to the eye. So this is... And you want the average for this, right? Uh, Makes sense. I think, so. yeah, I think, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and say yes. Cool. Uh, it's gonna be thirty-four hit points. Oh, baby! Damn. That's a lot better. Muchas gracias. Already had that calculated. Okay. Delicious. Um, solid. Um, so that was a fourth level of cure wounds. Um, and I will sort of uh, slide back into flanking. Um, and I will end my turn there. All right. Whew. Not bad. Okay. Oh, that's how you join it. That's how you join a fight. That's Hell how you join a yeah, fight, man. That was so cool. <laughs> uh, all the foot soldiers are dead. The Dang, Mystic, right they are. Mystic steps out of the storm sphere and is going to just try to kill Danny. Mm -hmm. oh, come on, Danny. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> Danny's been fucking them up. It just wants to take food back, so it's just gonna kill the first thing it can get. Food. Excuse oh, yeah, me, I yes, taste I don't think horrible. That, I don't think that oh. was clear, but you guys are food for the queen. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, so that's why they lie in ambush here and they wait for living creatures to come. Uh, on mechanism? Yeah, so that's gonna they must make, chew on a lot of Modrons. <laughs> it's going to make four psychic bolt attacks against you, Danny. Mm -hmm. Ooh, those sound like they were. How many hit points does Danny have left? 16. What? 16, cool. <laughs> First one, natural 19 plus... Uh, 25 to hit. That'll hit regardless, so yes. You take a uh, six points of psychic damage. Guys, I don't know if it just ready holds for out one. its claws, and there's not really an enter. Like, it's not, you don't see it. There's just kind of, it's telepathically making a attack roll beaming energy into your head. Ah, fucking headache. So, it's not, see, I would say actually, uh, Kiana can actually kind of see it through Suvi. She can kind of see, like, the weird vibrational energy, but Ooh. without being psionic, you don't notice these things but Ouch. anyway the second one uh second one is a natural 20. what are you so doing Danny's man dead. what are you mm. doing danny's down there's like no way i have 10 hit points the the damage is actually not that high on these guys um so it's well, neither of my hit points 10 points uh, of psychic Danny's damage down. Yeah. <laughs> 10 hit points. Oh, shit. wait hold on 1d6 is halved to 3.5 on average yeah which rounds down right? double Double, oh yeah, well actually we do the, the max, but I, I've been doubling it because the max damage does weird in this, anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's either way it's 10 or higher because then you add three. Yeah, so down. It's oh. either it's either, yeah, it's it's seven plus, plus three to 10, or it's nine plus three to 12, so. I taste horrible and Danny passes out. <laughs> A second one, uh, cool, she's gonna go over. So it's five, 10, 15, 20, 
10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35, she's going to fly over and get ready to pick up oh the my body. God. And she's, she's going to shoot look oh, twice in the meantime. Shit. Uh, wait, does she have the range? Actually, it might be really short. Nope. She doesn't have the feet. range, darling. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Curse mechanist and its law of averages. Damn my it. damage on that yeah, fireball you know is she's so much she's higher. She's got 60 feet of fly. She's going to fly up there and then shoot did uh Virla twice oh she's just All leaving right. danny alone uh well she's gonna go get the body after 25 she's got tons of fly 25 to hit Virla, and then a natural uh, okay ah, yes where was that so, when six I points of psychic damage sorry six. six points of psychic damage on the 25 okay. ow <laughs> and then she's part. going to fly back over to danny's unconscious body <laughs> okay kiana Yes? You're up. Oh, it's just my turn. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I thought the gladiator went at some point. Let's go! Okay! The gladiator goes um, at the top. Hmm. Oh, uh, con saving throw. Uh, correct. DC 10. Oh, shit, I need 11. One, I'm two. fine. Hold up. Oh, yeah. oh, actually, I'm good. You need to make a 13. Do you so. need to? You did go. you get hit? Uh, he I took damage from the fall. Yeah. But then you did the story form. Did you have a different oh, concept? He has, yes, yes, he has technically. I've had oh, it up this entire right. time, yeah. I really All want right, to take Kiana, this gladiator out ASAP. Do? I... Do what your heart tells I, you. I'm not going mm, anywhere. You might be. That's you the problem. Could be. Um, yeah. I... Oh, this advantage is too good to pass up, but I think I am going to go into a rage first. <laughs> uh... Bonus action, rage, uh, just so I take a little bit less damage from these fucking guys. Uh, where the hell is you it? You see uh, there the, it is. the form coalesces as you reach down into your fighting spirit. <sighs> okay, now, uh, because Finbar and I are flanking the gladiator, both my you attacks are an advantage. Good. Correct. First attack. Uh, And don't 19? forget, on top of the average, 19 will, uh, ooh, he will, uh, he will use his reaction. Hmm. To add three to his AC and make it a twenty. Oh, you cheating bitch! Frag. So okay, first second. attack will miss. Second attack. As you can only do that once, though. It's not like shield where it stays up. Huh, huh. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Twenty-seven. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> thank you. Okay, he so that's. He uh, carries your arm and then leaves himself completely open for your other arm to come in. Fantastic. Okay, that's 1d6 plus 5, but there's plus 2 from the rage, so it's actually 1d6 yep. plus 7, so that averages to 10. That um, is 10. Yeah. Uh, that was my action, my bonus action. Uh... You, sh uh, you want to try to stun him? <laughs> yes. Actually... I think I might I don't be able to. I not to tell you what to do. I just feel like you don't stun that often. And, uh, I certainly I, don't. You're absolutely I right. I keep forgetting it's a thing. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Make that con save, bitch. All right. He's got a plus three con, but he's not proficient. So he's just rolling one. Roll one d twenty plus three. Here we go. It's DC seventeen. Oh 19, no. Nineteen. Sorry. Okay. Well, the other he thing I wanted to stun. do uh, is I have this maneuver, a maneuver that I learned from fighting oh, that lady. Yes. The yes. menacing attack. Uh, when you hit mm -hmm. with a weapon attack, you can expend one superiority die to add the total to the damage roll. The target must make a whiz saving throw DC 16. On failure, it is frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Uh, so that would add another three on average. Uh, and make that whiz save. <laughs> okay, uh, he is, is he good at these? That's a good question. Is he good at whiz saves? <laughs> Plus five. All right, here we go, DC 16. Uh, he did roll an 18, so he'll take ah. the extra four points of damage, though. He does not resist that. Three, but, I mean, you know. Uh, it's a D8, it. so four. It's a D8? Should oh, be a D8. my mistake. I believe all Battlemaster maneuvers are a D8. No, superiority die is uh, D6. Oh, okay. My mistake. I'm, I'm sorry. I, it would be cool, though. <sighs> all right, well, at least I looked really cool when I did that. Um, do I want to break away and risk the oppie attack? You come in Danny. with, you see, you strike, and then you see the, like, Sui's face, like, brightens, and you can see, like, the spines and, like, the, you know, the visage of this creature from the Astral Sea that would frighten a normal being. Uh, and this thing just opens its <laughs> mandibles and, go, yeah. and shrieks back at you, sort of, like, towering and more menacing. Takes one to know one, I guess. Yeah, and then what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm going to use my movement... Don't sound I, so sad about it. <laughs> I just, I we're, I so rarely get to flank. I so rarely get to attack at advantage, but I'm really worried about Danny. 
Um, do what your heart tells I'm you. Gonna, I'll be fine. I'm doing what my, my heart is full of rage right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna break away, take the opportunity attack. Cool. He's gonna uh, make his attack at advantage on the opportunity attack. Come here, you. Uh, that's actually not that good. That's a 16 to hit you. Shame. He misses. Okay, that's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Eight. That's as far as I can get. There you go. We are coming to the end of this. Virla, you're already up against the metal. What would you like to do? Okay. I'm going all out. Do it. Let's go. Yes. Let's do it. Beast mode. For my action lightning bolt at the mystic. Oh. Yes. Well, fuck. All right. Deck save. Mm hmm. Nine. Fails. All right. <laughs> Whatever 8d6 average is. Uh, uh, 28. Seven, it's 28 because it's the same, yeah. 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 So 28 Fuck. lightning damage. This thing is not looking good. good. Bonus action, Storm Sphere on the Mystic. Deck save? Uh, no, I have to make an attack roll. Oh, okay. When you say uh, on the Mystic, <laughs> where's Danny in this? <laughs> <laughs> Not hit by lightning. <laughs> oh god. Oh, that's a 17. That's a 25. <gasps> oh. That'll hit. Uh, I would 14, hope so. point, 14 points of lightning damage. Oh. 14? Yeah. This thing had 13 hit points left. Oh. Hell yeah. Yes. Let's fucking go. Crack. I was literally I I didn't think it did that much. I was like, this thing's gonna grab Danny and fly away on this next turn. You see -uh. it begins to it grabs. Not my friend, please. <laughs> With two legs, scoops, begins to scoop Danny up. The wings begin to buzz, and then a bolt cracks through. It kind of gets shocked from the lightning bolt, and then the second one comes through and blasts clean through the chest, uh, and the thing slumps down onto the ground. You know when a bug hits oh. one of those, like, lamps? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real of the yeah. bug zapper. Yeah. Like a moth oh, baby. to a buzzer. Virla, does that end your turn? Uh, yes. And I'll just sort of say to Kiana, sorry, I should have warned you. Uh, no, no, we're good. All That's right. extremely precise and, and not big on the collateral damage. Yes. It's honestly refreshing. Hey. By design. <laughs> With uh, the Mystic, fantastic. With the Mystic as leader gone, uh, the Gladiator's turn comes up and he's just gonna cut and run. He is gonna dash. 120 right. feet away. Finbar, if you want to make an attack of opportunity against him, you can. If not, he's I just will. bugging. All right, Go come on. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay. No. It's a 19. It hits. Yeah, that'll hit him. I, I, I wanted that crit. Oh. oh. Okay, it's fine. Um, It's it's not. It's average uh, six damage. Okay. He flies away and... We drop combats. Uh, actually, Whew. no, we don't because I'm dying. Uh, mm. ah. it is Danny's turn now. Uh, Danny, your multi-tool flies out of your hand. <gasps> catch it! Catch it! <laughs> magnet magnetizes to the obelisk. <laughs> Wonder what that thing was. <laughs> it Vera, it just goes right past your head and. <laughs> oh shit! The obelisk. <laughs> uh, go ahead and make a death save. This is a very cinematic. What is it? What is Natural it? What one. is it? Ah! Okay. <laughs> Danny fails two death saving throws. I have one remaining. <laughs> That's okay. It's good. We are Danny not having this be the first character <laughs> death. This is this it's is too bullshit. Stupid this to be would be the some first weak sauce death. shit, my dude. Why? This is why bullshit. would you do this? <laughs> Narratively, why? I'm gonna describe this two death saves as you see the 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 magnet starts to pull in the armor, and you see she starts to teeter over the edge, no. and threatens to just fall uh, 200 hey. feet to the next. Narratively, that's the death save nope. as she's getting closer. Finbar, mm -hmm. it's your turn. God, Finbar, My please. turn. Okay, I need to get there as soon as possible. Finbar. And then... Yeah, Finbar, you're gonna run so through sorry. the storm. It's I'll difficult take... terrain inside the storm sphere. Yeah. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> drop the, you, can, you can drop concentration at any time, by the way. That's oh, true, actually. If that's the case, then yes, I am doing that. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah fair enough. Goodbye, storm sphere. <laughs> it's, it's still not enough to get me close enough. If only I was awake, to... it could vortex for a few. Can you last. hold an action to heal her? I can grab her and get her to you much faster than you can get to her. True. <laughs> okay. I can, I will... The time on her tradition hold, I don't... be on a taxi. Oh, wait, actually. Mm, wait, let me double check something. 
Um, you do on... holding a spell does require concentration, so yes. you would lose. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I'm aware. Just give me a hot sec to just check. It's something. totally fine, guys. We got this. No, <laughs> no, it's not okay. because. Guys, they're gonna say, yeah. "Oh, Verla, that's okay. You can just revivify with wish." And then I gotta, 50, 50. and then the kid, and then the jigs up. <laughs> oh no! So no, uh, you can't. Die. Oh, I'm sorry. It would be inconvenient Fimar for you. I'm sorry. Your web so. of lies would be exposed by the death of your best friend. <laughs> oh, that must be so hard for you. I will say, Verla, watching how does uh, Verla and Kiana, you watch as Danny, unconscious, begins okay. to drift so towards the edge. Cool. All okay. right, I will to fall move down thirty into feet. Crushing gears. Um, and I will Please don't say that. <laughs> That's how I would have wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! No, that was uh, yeah, okay. Uh, she died how she can't. lived, being all up in those machines. If only we had vortex warp. No way! <laughs> I did think about that. Uh, God damn it! Yeah, I thought you might have to mm. teleport someone who got pulled. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Fimor, can you make a strength save at the start of your turn? Sure. Uh, like, what, 23. Is, is cool, pulling. you're fine, you're not pulled. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that I, would I, bad. I, either oh, yeah. way, I'm, I'm gonna end up using another high-level spell, so I'm gonna hold my action to cast um, Cure Wounds on, yeah, the first person that gets to me, I guess, yeah. On Danny. Specific, well, it doesn't, Danny, yes, it doesn't on have Danny. to specifically be. The gladiator uh, comes back. <laughs> it doesn't specifically have to be Danny, technically, but yeah. Yeah. Is that as far as you I get? Because I do want a math that. It's because it comes to Kiana's turn. Because I have to use an action to dash. And I can't yes, use my action to hold my action. To dash. action. So, you don't, yeah. I'm guessing you don't have healing word. No, I didn't prep healing word. Okay. Wait, how does your. I... Wait, Finbar, how does your. Uh, st- your st- your star work, what range does she 30 have to be feet. in? 30, 30 feet? feet? No. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I can get to her in 20 feet, grab uh-huh. her with my action, get uh-huh. back another 25 feet, and bonus action dash to you. It's not that a problem. Works. I can get her to you on my turn. Cool. It's, it is your turn right now. We're going to math it out because Kiana goes 5, 10. I sure do. 10. 15. 15 20. 20. And then I grab her. Yoink. 25, 30. 35, Wait, 40. What? Oh, because I'm carrying... Okay, double we mi- gotta... I have my strength mi- friggin' doubled by these things. Uh, what, is your, what is your speed, 90? My speed is 45 walk speed. So da- so dashing, it's 90. So you have 90 feet. So that was 35, 40. Mm-hmm. 45, 50. 55, 60. 65, 70. 75, 80. 85, 90. My arms have 10 feet of range. I'm gonna you dump her next to, to me. You are able to just deposit yeah. her next to Finbar. Oh my god, five <laughs> feet. Ladies and gentlemen, five feet made the difference between Danny having to make another saving throw. We Did gotta he? fucking discuss you having my my speed when I have two <laughs> extra arms to hold people with and slip You're still medium. Climb. You're still holding someone with your little your little medium sized legs dashing about, holding a whole person. <laughs> with my strength of 19. <laughs> Finbar, Whatever, go ahead man. and what is the average healing on your Cure wounds. It's a first level cure wounds. Um, so it's um, it's a D eight. So that's four it's plus, a, plus four. It's a point. Well, it's a point five rounds down to zero. Uh, plus <laughs> five. So it's a total of nine. And then I can bounce another D eight. Um, and a D four from Leyland. Um, so, so that's that an comes extra out to four point five plus two point five. So an extra yeah. seven. Yeah. So fourteen. Fifteen points Generous. of healing to Danny. Generous. Fifteen. Yeah. Starry light fills the wounds, and a about to slip down Danny is caught by, or I should say, Kiana rushes forward, about to yeah. slip off, pulled magnetically by her studded leather. Danny is instead caught by golden arms with 10 feet of reach, pulls her in, dashes back, lays them at the ground of Finbar, who lays hands upon her. Starry light fills the wounds, stabilizing and indeed bringing you to consciousness. Danny. Your bronium fluctuator is gone. Where's my thing? It's here. It's here. Uh, it's it's. And I point to oh, it. that was almost. Like I think I did like the full baseball slide to get her the last five feet. By the way, yeah, so I'm just like on the ground. This is oh. everything you got. Oh, oh she's good. Okay. Huh. My rage drops too. The adrenaline's crashed. I didn't attack uh, an enemy. <laughs> I I forgot about the ants. Oh, I should. Okay. I should have seen the ants coming. All right. Not bad. We're all in one piece, Whew. right? 
Yeah, we are. We're, good. we're going oh. to the eternal battlefield after this. Oh, man. Oh, it's a good thing we didn't need to use that wish. Holy shit. Okay, <laughs> let's do the thing. Uh, yep. <laughs> what would you guys like to do? Uh, I would like to go over to where my Baronium Fluctuator is and retrieve it. Yeah. You, oh, uh, we're going to say now that combat has dropped, you guys are able to carefully make your way. Uh, you still skid every now and again, but not Kiana, but everyone else still skids <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but you're able to make your way to the Olisk. You retrieve your Baronium Fluctuator. And what would you like to do? We still have to figure out how to use this thing with the tuning fork. Yeah, well, I'm going to just try the... Yeah, well, go. Hit it with the tuning fork, see if it makes a noise. I was going to okay, try that first. <laughs> yeah. You do. It uh, vibrates. Go ahead and make an arcana check for me, whoever's doing this. I'll do that, yeah. Cool. You can actually... Uh -huh. uh, whoever's better can give advantage. Uh, so that way I run help action is you have to be proficient or... Actually, you're both proficient, so... Whoever wants to, they can give the help action to someone else. Uh, as long as you're proficient, you can give the help I have action to someone. I plus eight so. to Arcana. How's Virla at it? I Same. also have a plus okay. eight. So oh. there you go. Either you can help the other, or you can each roll. I'll help you. Um, can I throw a guidance on it? <laughs> yeah, while they're doing that, I just want to. I just want to poke throw them guidance, on it and see what happens. But you do have to pick who you're guiding. Is the enhance ability thing still up or no? I had to drop yeah. it to save Virla, you should All do right, it. All right, gotcha. Take okay. the help action from your good friend right. Danny. Who is standing there also Danny ready to Danny takes the help anything. and go ahead. <laughs> Roll 2d20, take Thank the higher, you. and of course add your d4 from Guidance. Ah, uh, yes. Unless you want to save it. 15. Natural 20. Hey Natural 20. <laughs> so what is you that, 28, 32, something like that? Or, yeah, 28 to 32. The Guidance sharpens your vision, and as Danny begins to point out that there are runes that? carved into here, you again start to like see the matrix of the weave and you find the right spot where there's the perfect resonant frequency you strike and the tuning fork begins to hum for a moment you think that it's just humming just normal but you start to feel it doesn't go away and indeed on a hunch as you move it you can feel the slightest perception as you move it away it gets Weaker, move it to a different direction, get stronger. You've got a homing beacon to where you're trying to go. We have a path. Ooh. But it has to be making that one musical sting from 2001. The, the, just... yeah. It's just <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, or it's just like when we finally reach it, it does the last bit of also Sprock Zarathustra. <laughs> Amazing. With your bearing and knowing that the eternal battlefield of Akron, <laughs> the world of food and cannot lie far away from you. I think that's where we're going to go ahead and end this session. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh my goodness, man. I didn't, I, I, there were so many surprises for me tonight. Uh, I, I hope you guys had fun because seeing Maxim, I was like, I, I, you guys, you're telling I, me I that you made this, this map new version. in session? <laughs> Uh, no, this is uh, Austin being a DM who's got tricks up his sleeve in case he needs to pull something out. Oh, Still impressive. He's, He's our guy in the chair, man. Uh, of course we go but see Max. I didn't Maxim. make this up. Like this is a map I had of the tuning ob of the obelisk uh, that that does that. So fantastic. Uh, it just happened to work out that you were like, I'll go talk to Max. It was like Max would have, well, Max would be able to help you out. He can't mm -hmm. help you all the way, but he can help you out. So I like to. I like to think that during this whole fight, Delphine was like on the ship, two cucumbers over her eyes, <laughs> soft music playing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really digging this like she's a babysitter, but like doesn't really need to babysit. She's a babysitter like, who like, is like very calls her boyfriend to her come hang out while they're there. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> we get back to the ship, there's like three other people there. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> These are my friends. <laughs> yeah, you get back from the yeah, host party. You get back from babysitting, you're like, is there. Did you leave the liquor cabinet unlocked? I didn't leave the liquor cabinet. <laughs> I think she used my shampoo. Ah, where all the Rice Krispies go? <laughs> I swear she's going through my clothes. <laughs> it's all to store those well. precious moments, figurine. She needs to wrap them so that they can travel better. She's playing oh, the longest man. game, Mistress but a tool in her machinations. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I love it so much. I'm so excited to see where you guys go next. I got some stuff to prep because the world of Foodinin is not a forgiving one.
spots. Mm. Scrap, and scrap, Danny's scrap, at scrap, nine scrap. hit points. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We can rest on the way. We don't need to go through immediately. Probably that is if, true. If we get a short rest off, I can I can top a lot of. People I could off, use so a long rest, it, frankly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe I, we nap for well, a yeah, we'll we fired see. off some We'll talk spells. about it next episode. <laughs> we'll see. We can probably more outside of Maxim's just nap in the ship. Take a little. <laughs> Nothing bad has happened can. trying to do that before. <laughs> Amazing. All right. You guys have a heading. We will pick up next week as we journey back to the Eternal Battlefield. I'm so excited. See you guys next week. Adios. Thanks for listening to this week's adventure on Rolling with Difficulty. We'll be back next week with a new installment, but if you miss us before then, check out the Rolling with Difficulty Discord. Chat with other fans, check out some cool fan art, and more. Got a question for the pod? Feel free to email us at rollwithdifficulty at gmail.com. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us and leave a review on your preferred podcast platform. And if you really enjoyed the show, consider becoming a patron for even more exclusive content. Links to all this and more can be found on the show notes below.